good afternoon and welcome to clear eyes classes uh, can, can you hear me you can use the uh, voice chat option and answer are you able to hear me yes okay yes sir okay. great 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 thanks for letting me know let's wait for a few minutes and let's start the class Uh, a few announcements uh, before the starting of the class. Uh, this uh, this is a class which uses uh, both the voice chat as well as the text chat feature. Uh, but aspirants are advised uh, to turn off your videos. Uh, you can of course use the mic option when you are asked to answer uh, any questions. But videos, uh, please keep it turned off. And uh, mic also you can turn off, but when asked to answer any questions, you can use the mic option and answer the questions. Okay. Let's uh, straight straight away start to the start this session. Uh, this is the agenda of today's session. Uh, it's very simple. Uh, the program is intended to boost your prelims marks. So that's it. Uh, to help you increase your the marks you get in uh, UPC prelims, uh, that is uh, that is our agenda. So we have different methodologies for that uh, that you will uh, see in the coming slides. And uh, just a brief introduction about ClearEyes, the platform on which you are uh, attending this class. Uh, ClearEyes is a platform uh, usually visited by uh, about 1 million aspirants per month. This is one of the uh, first online learning platforms in India. Uh, and uh, we offer many products like online notes, mock exams, videos, uh, live classes. There are many features uh, loved by aspirants. Um, I hope uh, since you all are attending on the platform, you know uh, about the features of ClearEyes. And uh, I, I shall just give a, a quick intro about myself. I am the trainer uh, who will be training you this particular class. And I will also be taking uh, many of the future classes to you at, as part of the Plums Marks Booster program. I'm basically a civil service trainer and uh, I have written two books um, and I'm the founder and director of ClearEyes. When I was an aspirant, I have qualified uh, five UPC prelims in a row and I have attended five UPC mains and uh, three UPC CAC interviews. My, uh, uh, my area of expertise is with online education and I have I've been taking uh, multiple subjects uh, like quality economics and ethics. So uh, let me uh, straight away start the session. Uh, uh, let me ask you uh, by uh, a simple question. I, I would like to get answers from most of you. And the question is this, why many aspirants are not clearing prelims? Prelims is uh, the first stage in UPC civil services examination. Prelims means an interview, that's how we, exam uh, uh, exam goes like that is the, that's the three stages in this exam but uh, the toughest stage in my opinion is the first stage that is the preliminary examination only three out of hundred candidates who attempt prelims clears it but wh what are the reasons like why uh, many aspirants fail in prelims there are uh, the number of vacancies are of course less that is uh, the main reason but but still, uh, about 10,000 aspirants will be selected after preliminary exam. This is a screening round, uh, like 10, 10 lakh aspirants apply, out of which 5 lakh uh, aspirants, the series, only serious aspirants appear for this exam. And out of that, 10,000 aspirants uh, uh, qualify prelims and they sit for the main exam. But 
why many aspirants fail to clear clubs what is uh, in your opinion wh- what are the reasons i have listed a few of the reasons which i found relevant uh, do you think that that points are relevant or do you have something to add you can use the voice option because this is an interactive session everyone is free to speak in this class don't uh, you don't have to be shy because this is a ice breaking session i know uh, most of you are tense uh, because prelims is getting near hmm? you have something like 50 55 days uh, before prelims but this is a 30 day program uh, and this is an ice breaker also i mean there is no need to be tensed uh, take it in uh, take it in a very uh, I, i mean easy and simple fashion i would like to make things simple and uh, unlike many other classes which will be something like a one sided class uh, this will be of course a two way interaction uh, uh, we use a question answer approach a special approach of clear eyes and uh, right from this slide onwards we will be taking a feedback from aspirants and we'll moving forward so what do we think are the main reasons why aspirants uh, fail in this exam anybody uh, can sir, take the initiative yeah sir uh, good evening sir good evening sir like uh, um my opinion is like year by year by year the questions are getting more conceptual so the direct questions are getting day by day reduced in prelims exam so the students has to go in depth of the studies to to look to answer the questions because there, there is no way they are asking the direct questions so it's getting more conceptual oriented excellent 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 so that's a main point uh, i i think that 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 itself uh, says a lot uh, the what you are saying you are saying is that students uh, have to do are... in depth the study huh Yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah. Questions are be- questions are uh, coming uh, from conceptual areas which you are not familiar. Is that the case? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Or yes, or, or you are studying in uh, one direction, but the questions are coming in another direction. Can I yes, uh, yes, can I take in that that way as well? Correct. Yes, sir. Because uh, even if you study from the books, the question doesn't come like the same as uh, as written in text or something like that. It gets more conceptual. Uh, you need to do in depth study of the topic. correct even if you are studying from textbooks you are not getting the that kind of questions from even from textbooks correct yes sir yes sir exactly exactly correct i know that that's that's the case that's a reality that's correct then uh, anybody else anybody else want to take the initiative i need your participation then only session will be live uh, anybody uh, 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 is mike is on please mute mute and uh, please uh, only if you are speaking uh, unmute and then participate in the session anybody wants to uh, add add please add otherwise i will be calling names okay this is something like a school session if you are not answering i will just call your name and you have to answer okay sir be, yeah sure i am please please go ahead. lack of lack of practice in questions lack of practice in questions of course of course that is definitely a main thing because uh, many aspirants don't practice much and they directly go to the exam hall without proper practice and they will find it difficult to crack this exam in the exam good point any other points that is something which i have mentioned okay of course any other point don't worry i won't take too much time i will directly go to the breath, but uh, you do you need to analyze yourself why, uh, why aspirants are finding it difficult to crack this exam any other points no, you don't have, you don't have to use the text option you have to use the voice option okay text chat you can leave for time being participate in the voice yeah bhanu please go ahead sir can ability to use the elimination method properly uh, can you repeat louder the inability in using the elimination method properly correct Uh, inability to use the elimination methods properly so you you are all aware that there are certain methods like elimination techniques but aspirants are finding inability to apply those methods that's another point great okay who next hello sir yeah hi varanasi siri na siri right uh, i think as the exam dates get date gets near we get more anxious and start uh, reading about new topics instead of revising the older topics because we get thinking that what if this topic comes what if that topic comes i haven't covered it yet so we instead okay. of revising the topics we've already covered uh, we start oh. reading new topics i think that's a blunder but it's something oh. that we oh. all do excellent uh, uh, that's one thing one problem you mentioned is about anxiety the anxiety factor so you are not able to focus correctly so when you find a new area you go behind that but you are not revising the uh, areas that should be revised uh, yes, revision sir. absence of revision uh, and uh, anxiety that is the two two things which you mentioned great that's relevant very relevant point anybody else 
wasting wasting too much time in current affairs but excellent excellent habib yeah. habib yeah excellent you have realized that i am very glad that aspirants are nowadays realizing the mistakes they are, they are committing excellent wasting too much time in current affairs do you think current affairs is over hyped i mean uh, that is one opinion i always have uh, i mean current affairs section is something which is overrated by many coaching institutes and even by youtube channels and every, everybody is discussing current affairs only not not giving enough focus to static areas is that your point also habib it was my point sir bhanu okay great excellent anybody else please use the voice chat option okay don't use the text yeah habib anything else ंग टेक्नोलॉजी and aspirants also they don't give enough weightage for science and technology uh, yes. and what happens uh, is that uh, 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 what the marks in science and technology usually gives the edge those who answer science and technology questions they will be having an edge uh, when compared to others so, so uh, when if science and technology is neglected that that it's a big uh, issue that many aspirants are not clearing the preliminary exam correct correct so we uh, i think uh, that's it uh, uh, for time being uh, thanks a lot for all those who have participated uh, you have all given valid points which is which is very relevant with, with respect to preliminary examination thanks a lot for your participation and all those points are relevant sir i like to add one yeah sure sir, sir like, like, uh, yeah. yeah sure please so like uh, like lot, lot of questions uh, students mostly in the fear of negative marking they leave most of the questions that is the big blunder by most of the aspirants come because you, when you leave lot of questions uh, the uh, chances of clearing the exam also gets reduced that the many less aspirants less number of uh, attempts less number of attempts ah, yes. because of fear of negative marking that is the biggest yes, uh, blunder that that's what you told right Ah, excellent yes, that that is also uh, that's also that's a, that's the reality that's the reality and uh, yes, uh, despite uh, multiple uh, uh, i mean uh, guidance from the mentors many aspirants fear of negative mark and there is such a i mean uh, guidance from certain mentors also like don't mark too many questions there is negative marking yes, and sir. somehow that notion sir, gets but in clear eyes it is uh, given clearly sir you need to attempt maximum number of questions is clearly yes. given in clear eyes sir right? Thank, thanks, thanks, th thanks for acknowledging that. And we we believe that uh, the increase in the number of attempts that will of course increase the marks. That is a main yes. point which I I have I have personally when I was myself an aspirant I even used to do hundred questions also. Uh, I always recommend more than eighty five questions uh, in in UPSC prelims for every aspirant. Increase the number of attempts, but that is also based on a process and a strategy. Just randomly. There's elimination technique and also the technique. Yeah, the question they paper solving strategy. technique also. There should be a step by step method. Uh, we will discuss that. There should be a process that all on a sudden you don't uh, need to go in the exam hall and practice hundred questions, but. it should be a proper method but generally speaking increase in the number of attempts will uh, definitely increase the uh, marks as well uh, that will boost your marks that is an important strategy thanks thanks for reminding me uh, right right in the thank beginning you, thank you sir thank you so uh, uh, having discussed many of the problems having identified the problems it easy to easy to tackle it. so you all know what are the problems you are, you, are, you are facing i mean uh, most the mistakes committed by aspirants in the exam or some of you might have attempted upsc prelims before some of you might not have attempted but you know the mistakes aspirants commit in the exam hall or, or during the preparation stage and once your problems is identified the job is half done now the you know the problem now the only uh, thing ahead is the solution part so i am just uh, consolidating some of the things you have said i, I have just listed five five items you have added many many more 
but uh, just reading out what I have mentioned, because one thing is the lack of conceptual understanding. Some of you have already mentioned that questions are coming from conceptual areas, which we are not aware. Even after reading textbooks, we are not aware because textbooks are also not covering into that, that area. Whatever textbooks and study materials we are having, they are, they are not touching that areas. So we are also not aware of that. And questions since coming in different direction, we are studying in another direction. And incomplete revision, uh, that is also uh, mentioned. And inadequate practice, that is another point which I have discussed. And uh, the poor awareness of a must-learn question areas, that is something which I will add. Because if you analyze previous year question papers, you can see that the questions are coming from certain areas. I mean, there are certain priority areas with respect to UPC problems. But uh, enough focus is not given to that area by many aspirants as well as faculties. Okay, there are certain such areas. I will explain such areas later. Later on in today's session itself, we will see that. Uh, and uh, the awareness of that must learn question areas is another area that will uh, that is reducing the uh, marks. Uh, you, you, uh, marks ideally you should be getting. Okay, and the limited exam skills. Exam skills is, are also very important with respect to. Uh, UPC civil services examination, not just knowledge. Uh, with just knowledge, you cannot clear this exam. You need certain exam skills. We'll see what are those skills as well. Okay. So what you have identified the uh, solution. I, I mean, you have identified the problem. Now it's time to find the solution. And the solution I will just uh, write in a single line. That single line of what the solution I suggest is the right guidance and training. Okay. Only proper training uh, is what is needed for you to uh, solve these problems. Okay. The training, uh, the importance of training, you know, like we are having uh, uh, seen the Olympics, you know, uh, how hard the athletes train, uh, all those Olymp Olympians, they train hard. They, they have their own coaches and they train. So they know the importance of training. So they are not just attempting uh, the uh, 100 meter race or 200 meter race uh, at, at that moment. Okay. They are, there are years of training involved for, so that they can perform at their optimum level in the actual event. So that is equally relevant for UPC as well. So there are many problems, even as participants, you also know the problems. As mentors, we have also identified many problem areas. And to solve that, there are certain methods, certain techniques, and that, that method has to be properly followed. Then there will be great results. You, the results will be great, okay? So that is the solution, right? Guidance and proper training, that's it. And this is the secret of success. If anybody is asking me the secret of success in the UPC civil services examination, I would say that is 50% knowledge and 50% exam skills. And this is this I have repeated throughout the clearize.com website as well. Just with, just with knowledge, nobody will be able to crack this exam. Okay, uh, that, that is sometime long ago. But now the competition is really severe. With just knowledge, you may not be able to crack this exam. You need certain exam skills. By exam skills, I mean, proper guidance, proper strategies, proper techniques. There are, there are skills that you need in the exam hall, proper time management in the exam hall, uh, how, which questions you take, which what to prioritize, what, what not to take. There are many things that you need to learn. So that all comes under the exam skills. Unfortunately, not every trainer or every mentor or every coaching institute caters to the exam skills part. Everybody is concentrating just on the knowledge part. But I personally feel that exam skills are something that, that should be properly uh, uh, addressed and we give enough focus for that, okay? And what can bring consistent success? Uh, with respect to prelims, uh, if you look at even toppers, you can see that even toppers who scored uh, uh, high ranks in uh, UPC prelims, I mean UPC exam, uh, their clear prelims means an interview in one year. But the next year when they attempt for prelims, they may not be able to clear prelims, okay? That happens. That happens even with toppers. So what I say that their uh, efforts are not consistent. I mean, in one year, they may be able to crack this uh, at a stretch, but in the next year, they may not be able to do, do this. And most aspirants, they, they won't clear plums in, the, in their entire lifetime. I mean, even after writing six attempts or nine attempts, they not, may not be able to clear plums. Plums is the biggest hurdle neck. But what is the secret of that consistent success uh, with respect to plums? I have told in my introduction, like in my experience, I have cleared prelims five times in a row. So there is something in, that is consistent. I am not uh, boasting about myself, but I am just saying that there are certain uh, mindset or certain methods, uh, certain strategies which I adopted. I, I would personally say that uh, the, it's, a, it's actually a mindset, like what things to do, what things to focus, uh, how should I approach a question paper. The process part is clear. So that is one of the reasons which I find uh, uh, myself, uh, the reason I, I cleared films five times in a row. 
so i i would just like to share uh, the way of my thinking and try to, i shall try to help you uh, to crack this exam with that that mindset and that sort of uh, techniques and so and some of you uh, i think uh, listening to many of the participants already i feel uh, you already are in the same mindset because you are all followers of clearize clearize.com so you know uh, how i think and how you should also think so that part i i think my job is easy considering uh, you are followers of clearize so the secret of the success is not uh, something uh, i mean something big or something totally alien but what what is the secret of success i would just say in a word that it is the process you follow so the process part is something that should be corrected if a process of preparing this exam is correct then that can bring consistent success okay so let's uh, go into detail in the coming slides uh, gradually we are moving uh, to what what you need to crack this exam okay so you now clear there about the process that process part uh, we are now going to and just a quote to help you uh, understand about the importance of process this is by this quote is by none other than uh, mahendra singh soni uh, mahendra mahendra singh doni so what doni says is that i have always believed in that process is more more important than the results so the stress to the right process the, that is needed for so for solving a question paper you need to follow a process to study uh, daily you need to follow a process the most efficient process you need to follow the time table should be most efficient to read a book there should be a, a process to read hindu newspaper there should be a process so if your process is efficient the results will be also be much more uh, i mean the results will be great so that that is the importance of process and uh, process describes how things are done and uh, how uh, how to think make things better if you if you focus on the right process your uh, success will also be uh, easy and fast and this is the question uh, which uh, which which is uh, which i would like to discuss and some of you have already told this uh, why uh, the cut off of upsc csc prelims is only around 50% in the previous years it is uh, you might be knowing like the what was the cut off last year anybody 2020 uh, cut offs are not at out right uh, 2020 cut offs are not at out because the results are not yet published but 2019 cut off what was that anybody the general category 50% uh, like that around general category how much around 52 or something like that no general category prelims cut off was less than, less than that it was something uh, less than uh, 50% i mean it was 98 or something right yeah it was it was it was, it was, it was around 50% only it was around 50% only i mean out of 200 marks one need, need uh, needs to get only 98 marks to clear the cut off in 2019 okay uh, the cut off was very low I, i mean even in 2020 also the cut off should be around 100 only like it was not a big cut off so why is the cut off uh, only around half of the marks in upsc prelims prelims being an objective exam if you write write uh, uh, the correct answer you will be getting full marks right like uh, the beauty of this preliminary exam is that every uh, the answer of all questions are right there in the question paper itself have you seen notice that because you you are getting 100 questions and all the answers of all 100 questions are directly there in the question paper itself you just need to select that that is there right and this is not a subjective exam like mains or interview but despite that the cut off marks in upsc prelims is only around 100 and most of the aspirants clear it by just scoring a, a just above the cut off score if if 100 is the if 90 is the cut off mark most aspirants score something like 105 or 106 or 107 or something like that those who are scoring above 120 or 130 are very rare and 150 totally rare i mean very few aspirants score above 150 these days okay most aspirants score in the 100 110 or 120 that range so high score as not uh, high scores are not coming i mean most of the aspirants are scoring in the around in and around the cut off so why is that the case why in an objective exam like upsc the cut off score is very less even the bright candidates are not able to score high marks the percentage of mark is something only like 50 or 60% why nobody is able to score 90% or 95% or even 80 or 70 why why that anybody 
the questions are getting so tough also. And students are not giving equal. Our students are not giving equal importance to CSAT papers. Sir. And many students fail in the CSAT. Yeah, that, so that, that, is a, uh, that is a that is a totally different thing, right? Like CSAT is a totally different thing because I am just asking about paper one, general studies paper one. But with with respect to general studies paper one. Why aspirants are not able to score in the 150s or 160s or 170s? I'm not speaking about 200, but even 150 is also a very difficult target, right? Why is it? Why is it so? Questions are so tough and uh, complicated. Questions, questions are so tough. Can so I say tough. like, uh, yeah, sure. The, like the uh, area is very vast for the uh, paper one, right? So we have everything there. We can say like everything under the sun can be asked in the paper one. Oh. So whatever okay. student is targeting, there is still okay. something which is, is. Okay, your name, please. Pankaj, sir. Huh? Myself, Pankaj, sir. Okay, Pankaj. Yeah, you're you're right. The area is very vast, and questions are uh, coming from tough. I mean, the you find many of the questions tough. But what is meant by tough questions? Tough questions means questions you are not sure, right? Like questions are difficult to answer. Why is such questions are difficult to answer? Despite, uh, I mean, uh, UPSC is, uh, is not attempted by, uh, not just by beginners. I mean, there are aspirants who are preparing for three years, five years, six years. I mean, such aspirants are also there. Right? Veterans are there. Toppers who scored rank one, uh, I mean, uh, toppers who scored uh, really good ranks, they might also be repeating this exam. But still, they also are not able to score prelims in prelims 150, 160 or 170. Their score, are, uh, even after repeating, will also be something like 110 or 120. Okay. So, despite five or six years of effort, many are not able to score high in prelims, which is an objective exam. I am just asking, like, why, why is such a case? The unpredictability yeah. nature of the exam. Unpredictability nature, okay. Okay. Okay, somebody who has not spoken it, can you uh, bring some ideas, fresh ideas? Hello, negative, yeah, sure. Please, uh, who first? Sushmita. Sushmita. Yeah, yeah, please. Yeah. So negative marks also. Negative because marks. Of negative marks also. Yeah. Correct. correct. Because of okay. that, if uh, ten questions are correct, mm -hmm. then there's a possibility of uh, three point three marks. Uh, for negative marks. Uh, uh, negative is actually minus point uh, six six. Okay. Yeah, negative mark is also a reason why uh, the percentage is coming down. Anybody who is coming, uh, who has points next, Ambika. Sir, hello, sir. Yeah, please. Sir, in my opinion, uh, like when we prepare for the exam, the way we look at the topic is quite different from the examiner point of view. Correct. So while answering the question, we were unable to reach to that point where UPS examiner wants the answer. So that is my opinion, sir. That's correct. That's correct. Okay. That that's uh, to an extent uh, very relevant. Uh, I mean, very near to the point which I was looking. What I I would like to say is that you are trained uh, to study in a one particular fashion. I mean, you are. Uh, it's not only your fault. I mean, not 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 the fault of aspirants. Aspirants are trained to prepare in such a fashion. But UPSC is asking questions in another direction. That this is something which I have discussed initially. That's why you find the question stop. You will be studying in certain areas from certain textbooks, certain study materials, certain free materials available in the internet. But questions are not coming from any of these areas. Questions are coming from different areas or in-depth areas or peripheral areas. But you are not seen or uh, understood that areas. Even topos have not seen that. Despite five or six years of effort, many aspirants have not seen such question areas. That's why the, the cutoff is coming down. They are able to, uh, uh, I mean, solve only about half of the, uh, they are able to score only half of this, uh, half of the marks, right? I mean, they might be getting questions, something like a 60 or 70 questions correct, but at the end, their marks are something like around 50% only. This, this is the reason. The UPC is preparing questions from different areas, but why can't you prepare such areas also? That's my point. Why can't you prepare such areas also? You have at least one year of time for preparation. I mean, repeat aspirants who are veterans, they have they are preparing for like three or four, year, four years. Still, uh, why can't you identify the areas from which UPSC is asking questions? That's the point. Okay, I'm not blaming anyone. I'm just uh, just 
just making you also think along with me hmm? the case is that the questions are now coming now no not no not now i, I mean the cutoffs are very low uh, in the last two years the case is that the questions are coming from certain areas that aspirants are not trained to study or they are looking only at traditional sources i would say something like that whatever coming to them from the form of telegram channels or youtube free youtube channels or free pdfs uh, whatever circulated to them or the traditional textbooks they have i mean ncrts or certain standard textbooks they are they are they are only referring that and even some coaching materials also they might be referring but none of these are enough or capable to help aspirants score high marks is that are, are, all of you are you agreeing agree with me what i my point is that there are gaps in the preparation what is uh, what is required by upsc and what aspirants prepare or study there are gaps all of you uh, uh, agree with what i am saying why are you silent are you agreeing or do you have different yes, opinion yes sir yes 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 okay so um, our point in this 30 days is to address that gap the, this course is actually a gap filling session we will try to address that gap to the maximum extent possible okay within 60 hours it's not e easy to identify the full gap but i shall try my best to help you with whatever limited time we have to address that particular gap that gap okay so uh, the new question areas or the question areas which we are not preparing we will try to find that gap if that gap is, gap is filled definitely your marks will also increase so there are certain areas from which new questions are coming repeatedly we identify and try to fill that gap then that gap is bridged then your scores will also increase that is the case so that is the case uh, but we have definitely time constraints so it's not possible i am not i am not an expert or a magician who can teach everything within just 60 hours or 30 days we are only devoting 2 hours per day but within that limited time frame we shall try our best okay and this is the next question this is the connected with this i am say i am just saying like you might be reading ncert textbooks you might be reading standard textbooks so but still you are able to get only 50% of the marks this is the case this is the case as of now this is the reality as of now i mean by reading ncrts you will be getting 25% marks by reading additional standard textbooks you will be getting an additional 25% marks but that is only making only 50% marks but that is as of now that is enough to clear the prelims correct the uh, cut off marks is only around 50 so that is why you are able to clear prelims but there is there is a remaining 50% marks that is coming from different sources which we are we are unsure right everybody is unsure that is the case across india L luckily luckily that is the case across india so everybody in india don't know like how to prepare for this exam to score high marks so uh, since if 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 at least if if 1000 or 10000 or 20000 aspirants know that that to how to fill that gap the cut off will also be uh, be in something like 140 or 150 or 170 if everybody know like the new question areas and upsc is also adapting upsc is also adapting and they are trying to bring questions from the new question areas and similarly the online learning platforms or coaching institutes or trainers or mentors who are is uh, eagerly analyzing the question papers they are also adapting they are also learning and then they try to help aspirants prepare in that direction uh, serious mentors i am saying okay so this is something uh, that that we will see like uh, how that process goes but what what this thing you, sh you should be clear like despite going behind all the ncrts all the standard textbooks the, there is a limit of marks that can help you with there is a limit and the remaining areas is something totally different we will see what are the remaining areas and how to get marks in that area okay and this is something which i i, I always said like uh, it, it, after prelims this is something which i i, I hear and uh, many times from aspirants first first and foremost i would like to tell you one thing clearize is not a coaching institute as such we don't offline we don't offer offline coaching we are not a coaching institute we are an online learning platform with a special kind of mentorship and we offer great features when compared to many coaching institutes okay but we are a special kind of online learning platform uh, uh, but the case is that we uh, uh, we try to keenly analyze the upsc question patterns trends etc and we we'll try to crack the code of upsc uh, from our end there is a sincere effort to address the gaps uh, of uh, 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 between the uh, aspirant side and upsc and try to help with 
uh, new initiatives that, that will address that, that particular, that gap, okay? And we'll also try to find the areas from which UPSC is asking questions, new, new question areas, how to help aspirants prepare that. That, that part is constantly there. Every year we'll try to do that. Every year we try to improve ourselves. And UPSC is also trying to do the same. I mean, UPSC is also um, improving the question standards. So that process will, is an ongoing process. Uh, just want you, you to understand. But certain coaching institutes, they are still stuck with the age-old method of preparation. Okay. If they are stuck with the age-old methods of preparation. I, I'm not naming any, any anybody, but just to help you understand. And many mentors or the free materials available in the internet, uh, they, they are not adapted with the latest requirements. That, that is the point which I would, I would like to con convey. Only if that code is properly cracked, you will also able to get high marks. Otherwise, you will also be stuck with the same of 70s or 80s. And despite repeated attempts, you will, will not be able to crack this exam. So the proper training, that is something which I am stressing uh, again and again, okay? And this is two terms which we discussed throughout the 30-day program, that is return on investment and smart work. Our program is entirely based on the return on investment. Whatever you are studying, whatever you are preparing, whatever you are doing, that should be entirely based on the return on investment. You should always think about that. And, and connected is a connected term is the smart work. And we'll, of course, focus on smart work. Okay. And this is something which uh, probably you might have already read in the description part of the uh, Clear Eyes Plum's Mars Booster program. Uh, and that, that, is, that can be some of, one of the reasons you have already joined the program as well. So if your score in UPC prelims is in the, uh, if you have already attempted prelims or if you have taken mock exams, if you are stuck in the 80s, 70s or 80s, just understand this. You just need to get additional 10 questions correct to clear the cutoff marks, okay? So every correct question carries a weightage of two marks and every wrong question, uh, is, there is a negative of minus 0 0.66. So if you, wrongly answer 10 questions you are effectively losing minus 26.66 marks okay so if you correct if you can make that 10 questions when, where you went wrong as a correct answer you are effectively gaining 26 marks so the 80 uh, if you are if you are scoring only 80s in the mock exam that will automatically become 106 and you'll be easily clearing the clums cutoff so that push is needed for you and this is a session for, to help you score extra 10 questions correct, just extra 10 questions correct, that will be enough for most of the aspirants to clear the cutoff. So my push is on that. I'm not saying that uh, I can help you learn right from the beginning, everything you can learn from within 30 days, that is not possible. Uh, uh, if, if, if I'm devoting full time from morning to night, probably that can happen, but we are only spending two hours per day and that is also part of your program learn daily schedule how i am planning the program is that you will be anyway uh, preparing something like eight hours per day from now i hope most of the aspirants will be preparing eight hours per day if if you're not working professional working professionals can has uh, i mean have time limitations they may not be able to find eight hours per day but still they may also may be able to crack something like uh, four or six hours per day and if you are having eight hours per day for UPC preparation, out of that eight, eight hours per day, devote uh, the two hours in your day uh, in, as part of the preparation for Prelims Mars Booster Program, just two hours. That will be a much more efficient way of preparation because in that two hours, you will be learning a lot of things. And that, that thing you can learn in the class itself. Don't uh, try to learn it after the class, just learn in the class itself. So that will just that will just count as self study. You will be learning a lot, and that will be an effective method of preparation, uh, and that will help you to get that extra ten questions correct, and will help you to crack the problems. Okay, that's it. I hope uh, you understand. And this is a special kind of program. Program I think nobody has done a similar kind of program before, and uh, we focus on certain areas only. We don't deal uh, the full syllabus or anything like that. Uh, usually, this session will be helpful for all aspirants who have prior information. I believe uh, since you have prepared for last one year or so, uh, you will be having certain basic information. And I'm just trying to connect things which you already know and build a little bit on that, a little bit value addition that will help you crack this exam. That's it. And uh, we focus on repeated question areas and uh, probable new areas. And we'll also focus on elimination techniques in the class. Okay. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> this is the agenda. This is the program. I'm just briefing the program. So anybody, if you join, 
if you are not having that idea what this program is all about this is the program which we are proposing this is a 30 day program and just 2 hours per day and 60 hours in total there will be live classes usually from 6 pm to 8 pm so that you can study in the morning time and at the evening time you can come and sit with me to brush up certain things and you will be all, also much more motivated and focused that's the uh, aim of the program and if you miss any live classes, you will be getting access to the recorded classes. The recorded classes you can watch from the uh, ClearEyes classes mobile app or, or from the ClearEyes classes website. You can add, watch it. It's a platform based. So there is no, uh, 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 I mean, you don't have to worry if you missed any class, but I strongly recommend all participants to attend live classes because the in the live classes, the interaction happens. That is where you learn. Uh, I mean, you can interact using the voice chat itself so you can learn. It will not be a one-man show. You can learn along with me. Uh, and uh, the classes can be attended, as I told. You can attend from the laptop or mobile app. And uh, you can watch it unlimited times until plums. If you have not placed any restrictions regarding the watch time, you can watch it unlimited. And, and uh, any live classes you missed, you can uh, attend the recorded classes. That's the program all about. And uh, the pro, this is a uh, revision course, and this is a crash course, and this is a gap filling course. Okay, this combines the benefits of all. But if if you ask me to define what this course is all about, this is just a gap filling course. This is uh, uh, that's a precise word which I would like to use. This is a gap filling course which will which I try to address the gaps aspirants are having. Okay. Uh, these are some of the areas that we will focus on. We will focus on the concept clarity. We will focus on the high yielding areas. Previous year question papers we will be taking. Most probable questions we will be discussing. And we will also discuss clear eyes, intelligent elimination techniques. Certain techniques we will discuss. So uh, that's how this session is planned. Huh? And we follow as, as, as we have seen so far. We, I will ask questions and I expect answers from you. So this is a uh, interactive way of uh, discussion. Interactive way of learning. That is That is a much more effective way of learning. Uh, otherwise, if you're just sitting, uh, you uh, you will not learn that much. But if you participate in the discussion in a, vo in a vocal fashion, uh, that will definitely help you uh, score better. You can also think, you will start thinking at that time when you see questions. So this is mostly an MCQ or a question-oriented approach. We will try to solve maximum MCQs in the class. Uh, we will also deal uh, topics without MCQs also, but mostly it will be an MCQ-oriented approach. I hope all of you got some idea regarding the program. Yes, everybody. Everybody. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. So uh, let's uh, start uh, straight away. Uh, these are some of the things which we will be analyzing. I will just start with a uh, question. Uh, let's start with a question. If you need a break, let me know. Uh, I can give you a break, but let's start uh, straight away with a question. So. You will be able to understand how this session is going to uh, be conducted. This is a question which is asked in UPC uh, prelims 2021. Okay, this is the question. Uh, uh, who will be reading that question out? Uh, was Siri, can you read this question out? Yes, sir. Yeah, please. The 2004 tsunami made people realize that mangroves can serve as a reliable safety hedge against coastal calamities have to function as a safety hedge. So option A, the mangrove swamps separate the human settlements from the sea by a wide zone in which people neither live nor venture out. Option B, the mangroves provide both food and medicines which people are in need of after any natural disaster. Option C, the mangrove trees are tall with dense canopies and serve as an excellent shelter during a cyclone or tsunami. Option D, the mangrove trees do not get uprooted by storms and tides because of their extensive roots. Great. Uh, thanks a lot. Thanks, sir. thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Uh, and one thing which I would first uh, you to acknowledge is that this question is asked in 2020, uh, I mean, 2011, right? 2011. But the question has a mention of date. That date is 2004. This is the first thing which I would like to bring to your attention. Uh, 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 the gap in, in current affairs. Okay, the span of current affairs. This is something you should be knowing. Most aspirants devote, as we have seen, uh, discussed before, most aspirants devote a lot of time on current affairs. What is more than required? That is a mistake, of course. The next mistake committed by most aspirants is that they 
devote their time only for last one year current affairs. But UPSC may not be asking questions directly from last one year current affairs. That was the case some many years before. Nowadays, the span of current affairs is also really big. So see this question. This is a 2011 question, but the question has a date which is connected with 2004. Okay, such so that means a seven years gap is there. Such kind of questions can also come. Now, uh, having understood that, uh, try to find the answer. You don't have to Google. Please don't Google uh, in sitting this sitting in the class and trying to find the answer. You think, think and uh, try to find the answer. Think that you are sitting in the UPC exam hall and think along with me, uh, try to find the answer. Who will uh, uh, say the answers? Uh, you can uh, say the answers loud, okay? You can commit mistakes. Don't uh, don't be no. afraid. There is no so, there is no I harm think, if you miss. Oh. So I think the answer is B. The mangrove trees yeah. do not get uprooted by storms and tides because of the extensive roots. D. Uh, you 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 mean answer choice is D, right? Yes, sir. I think. Okay. So. Okay. Uh, anybody? Anybody else? Any any different opinion or all are, all are concurring with the. Uh, we Radhakrishnan's opinion or uh, any 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 other thing or you can even uh, uh, use the uh, chat option for this as well i mean let me go through the chat will as well i'm just now going through the chat uh, uh, any any different opinion you can mention in the chat almost all are uh, all of the opinion answer is d right c uh, a few of you have mentioned c uh, any 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 different opinion Okay, chat. We, we shall also use chat, text chat as well as uh, voice chat. Okay, text is also fine. So initially, you can use the text, and then if I ask you to explain, uh, you can use the voice. Okay, uh, A option. Uh, if you if you have explained A, A and D. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, who we? Uh, okay. Okay, A and B, uh, some of you have mentioned, but uh, we shall see what is the answer. Okay, official based on official UPC. Uh, D is the answer. Like uh, V Radha Krishnan was right, uh, the answer is D. Hmm? Mangrove trees don't do not get uprooted by storms and tides because of their extensive. So uh, I just uh, took this question just to uh, make you understand that sometimes in uh, UPC the current of phase, the span of the current of phase is actually not limited to one year. Actually, the question is not a really tough question. To be frank, with a little application of common sense, you can uh, uh, find the answer. Most of the UPC questions can be solved by the uh, application of logic and common sense. Sometimes you can go wrong in that. Uh, but in fact, you can go wrong in UPC questions. That's what I, uh, I always say. Uh, I, I shall give you a tip today. The tip is that from today onwards, you should be thinking backwards. Uh, think that you are sitting in the UPC exam hall and then think backwards. Try you uh, try to try hard to clear problems in both papers, paper one and paper two. Okay, so uh, let's first talk about general studies paper one. And to clear general studies paper one, we have already seen the based on previous trends, the cutoff is only around fifty percent. That means hundred marks out of two hundred. That is enough in the last two years. Okay. Uh, but we don't we, we shall uh, uh, take a precaution uh, suppose uh, if anybody uh, had no, uh, already learned the art of cracking upsc say some 20000 aspirants know the art of cracking upsc uh, since we are also doing free sessions right like so and if you put this in in youtube everybody learned the art of cracking upsc uh, then the cutoff will also be higher right like suppose if the cutoff is something like 110 or 115 then also you should be able to get it for a safer to be on the safer side I always advise aspirants to aim for a score above 120. 120 is a safe score. Considering the trends in last, uh, I mean, last seven or eight years, 120 is a safe score. To get 120 marks out of 200 in general studies paper one, you, you should target to get 70 questions correct. So whatever mock exams you are solving from now onwards, may count the number of questions you are getting as correct answer. Don't just look at the final score. Look at the answers you are marking correct if you are getting 70 questions correct there is no need to worry if 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 you are marking all the 30 remaining questions wrong also then there is no problem with all the 70 questions itself you will be scoring 140 marks and for the negative marks in the remaining questions there will be only something like you will be losing only 20 marks 140 minus 20 you will still get 120 marks okay so your target i have given you all a target your target is very simple score 70 questions correct in general studies paper one 
that is that is the uh, simple it's a very simple target for you okay and 50 or 55 questions correct in general studies paper 2 that will be enough for you to crack the general studies paper 2 out of 80 questions in general studies paper 2 even if you correctly answer 50 questions you will uh, clear that uh, that paper because each answer in general studies paper 2 is worth 2.5 marks so that's it so uh, the target is clear from now onwards all of you are ready to uh, achieve that target right Yes, sir. A, con a, a confidence yes, sir. is needed. Right? Everybody? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Are, you all, are you all tensed or an anxious now? Like, uh, you, do you feel uh, demotivated or uh, are you uh, uh, any, any anybody feeling demotivated now because of the no, COVID sir. situation, isolation? As, as it is my first attempt, I'm a little, little bit uh, fearful. No, 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 no need to worry. No need to worry. You can crack it in the first attempt itself. Flims is, is crackable in the first attempt itself if you know the techniques and strategies with proper knowledge. Knowledge is definitely needed. I always say that 50% knowledge plus 50% exam skills, but no need to tense. A little tension is okay, but not don't spoil your chances because of over tension. Okay. Uh, a little pressure will be definitely help. That will push you to work harder. Uh, taking uh, the prelims, uh, prelims very lightly is not a uh, great strategy. I mean, that's a bad strategy. Uh, of course, taking the prelims very lightly. That is a mistake committed by many aspects. They devote too much time on the means preparation, thinking that prelims is a, it can be cracked easily. But uh, prelims need separate devotion for uh, prelims. At least last six months should be uh, uh, entirely left for prelims preparation. Then only uh, these days you will be able to crack prelims. Okay, so anybody if, if uh, anxious, there is no need to be anxious with the uh, with, with with the preparation time you have left from now onwards. That will be enough for you to crack the problems. Okay. So having seen this question, I am not. Yeah, Aditya, any, anything to add? Uh, yes, sir. Good evening. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Good evening. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So like, uh, uh, basically, I have read all the base uh, NCRTs and the standard books. Oh. And uh, I've been uh, I'm doing current affairs also regularly. But oh, like uh, oh. in, in all my recent mock tests, I subscribe to Clear IAS Insights uh, mock oh, tests. In, oh. in that time, I'm, I'm only getting uh, 70 to 75 marks. So like my concern is whether uh, like in the, with this course and in the next two months, whether from 70, I can go to one, on 100, yeah. 110, of, 120. Of course, that is the aim of this course as well. Like this course is definitely for aspirants like you who are scoring. Yeah, but like you, said, you said it's mainly for those who are getting above 80, right? Yeah, but 70 is also fine. 70 and 80 is all actually 10 marks, right? Like you can definitely, you're also following that range. Don't feel disheartened. Even 60 also is fine, okay? Don't take it, uh, I mean, on the literal sense, don't take it. Uh, you can, of course, you can crack it, okay? Increase the number of attempts, Aditya. How many attempts are you uh, attempting the actual paper? Oh, this is my second attempt. I mean, uh, no, I mean, not, not that. I like in question, uh, I mock exams, how many questions usually you will be attempting? Uh, uh, I attempt, uh, I try to get more right, so I attempt uh, uh, 70 to 80 maximum. Okay, try try to increase your attempts to 85 plus, uh, try to make it 90 plus, okay. I, sh I shall explain, in, in the coming sessions, we'll uh, teach you how to increase the attempts without making uh, negative marks. We'll, we'll teach you that. There are techniques you will teach, then then you will safely scoring well above 90s, I, I mean, well above the cutoff score also. Gradually, you can in increase the score. In the coming mock exam, you can increase the score, definitely you can increase. And uh, don't uh, feel disheartened about, about the scores you get in the mock exam. Mock, exa mock exams are usually a uh, set a little bit tougher when compared to actual UPC problems because uh, for you to uh, get into that mindset, I mean, uh, if tough questions come comes also in the UPC, then also you should be able to answer, right? So that's it. It, it is purposefully set like that. But don't feel disheartened about the score. The only thing you need to focus is you need to practice despite your scores. You should keep attempting mock exams and increase the number of attempts to around at least around 90. More than 90 is also fine. Okay. Increase the number of attempts and you will automatically see the, your scores increasing. Okay. I have a doubt. Can I ask you? Uh, uh, any, any doubts regarding the strategy? I think uh, probably you can take at the end. But uh, anything related to questions, we can. I think I can take one question and then. Uh, we shall come back to the session itself. Other questions we can take yeah. at the end. Okay. Yeah, sure, please. Yeah. Other yeah. Sir, yeah. Now, please like uh, our strategy in the last 50 days, like we need to solve more mocks or we can uh, uh, keep one more mocks. mocks a day. 
more at more least uh, at least one mock in every day like if you have how many days you have left for prelims around 55 days around 55 days try to solve at least one full mock exam uh, sit, uh, thinking that you are sitting in the exam hall okay so within the next 55 days you will be able to solve something like 55 mock exams that means 5500 questions mcqs okay that will of yes. course help you clear prelims don't think about the marks okay but only thing you have to focus is that that mock exam you are taking that should be a, a high quality one which should be similar to the actual upsc question paper sir okay. subscribe for the clear as the prelims test in this of course uh, finish all the mock exam oh. finish all the mock exams once you okay. finish all the mock exams go for the previous year upsc retake question papers in clearize platform clearize also has a previous year upsc retake exam from 2011 to 2021 okay yes, sir the questions are really of good quality sir uh, thanks a lot, uh, Veera Th Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Uh, we try, we take a lot of effort to uh, 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 make questions which are very relevant and... Uh, uh, yes, sir, and many and coaching high... should, uh, yes, sir, many coaching should they create so much of questions to create anxiety, sir, but it is their questions are of moderate level, sir. Correct? It's like uh, similar to UPSC content, sir. Uh, thanks a lot, but uh, we can uh, can also keep the compliments to the later part. Otherwise, thank uh, you, as friends will think that uh, you are a paid to <laughs> Say good things no, no, okay, okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. 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 That's okay. That's okay. Uh, we, we shall discuss the strategies also towards the later part. Later part. Okay. Uh, uh, then uh, let's go to the next next question. Okay. This is the next question uh, with respect to UPC 2021, a previous year UPC question paper. Um, you can type in the. Uh, uh, in somebody read. You need to read the question out, and then you can tab chat type the answers in the chat section. Uh, I shall call a name and uh, then, okay, Deepshika, can you read the question out? Deepshika, are you there? Or in, or in, somebody can take the initiative. Everybody afraid seeing a UPC question? I, so this is Deepshika, uh, are you listening to me? Yeah, Deepshika, yeah, you, you can, you can take the initiative. You can please read yes, the sir. question paper. Yes, sir, question. yes, sir. The question is, with reference to Indian freedom struggle, Usha Mehta oh. is well known for what? Is it option okay. A, having the secret Congress radio in the wake of Quiet India movement? Is it option B, participating in the second roundtable conference? Is it option C, leading a contingent of Indian National Army? Or is it option D, assisting in the formation of interim government under Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru? Okay, great. Great, great. Okay, you can type in the uh, chat session answers, please. Okay, many answers are coming. I think uh, most of you know the answers as well. Uh, looking at the chat section, I think uh, great response is coming. Great. Okay, uh, then uh, I think uh, uh, I shall call an name and uh, please mention that. Oh, Deepishika itself. Deepishika, can you find the answer? What is your opinion on this? Uh, sorry, sir, I, get the, I can't get the point of this answer. I'm unable to answer this question. Uh, are you familiar about the question? I, I mean, are you able to answer this? No, sir. Sorry, sir. Okay, that's okay. That's okay. That happens. That that is why I put this question. This this is case is that with respect to Indian history, uh, Indian national movement, I mean particularly, we often uh, uh, read about uh, the main national leaders like uh, Mahatma Gandhi, Jawaharlal Nehru, Subhash Chandra Bose, uh, Tagore, or, uh, like that, like that. Patel. We we lead, uh, read a lot about many of the leaders. Like, Prominent leaders. Of course, UPC asks questions about these main mainstream national leaders as well. But there will be at least two or three questions which are connected with leaders that are not that well known. I mean, uh, not that uh, into the prominent uh, mainstream uh, Indian uh, freedom uh, struggle. Uh, such a question is this. The similar questions can be there in every year. Every year, okay. So don't just focus on mainstream leaders. You have to focus on the other leaders particularly with respect to the books or any literary work or any drama or anything they are associated with, any cultural activity or anything they are associated with, you should be focusing on that. That is a repeated question area. Every year in history, uh, uh, try to all, also look on leaders that are not that popular. Okay. For with respect to this question, what is the answer? You all got right. I mean, uh, looking at the chat section, A. most of you have got it right. Yeah, please. Manu? <laughs> Yes, sir. You mentioned, yeah, you, you, did you mention something? Sir, the answer is A. Correct, yeah. Exactly, excellent, correct. 
So you all know, like I, you all are learning. That's great, and you also have also gone through the previous year question papers. That is also good. Let's see. Uh, let's take check your knowledge in the next questions. Okay, you are learning in the process also, right? This is the question. Another question in uh, UPC twenty twenty one. Okay, this is a question connected with the geosynchronous satellite. Uh, who will uh, read it out? Uh, 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 I can see only a few participants. I mean. Uh, uh, I shall call a name. Uh, who uh, Jain Divedi? Are you there? Jain. Jain. Okay, Urvashi, can you take the lead? Urvashi Sharma. Yes, sir. Yeah, sure, please. Satellites used for telecommunication today are kept in a geostationary orbit. A satellite is said to be in such an orbit when, when the orbit is geosynchronous, two, the orbit is circular, three, the orbit like in the plane of the Earth, the orbit is at an altitude of 32,000 to 36 kilometers. Which of the correct, which, 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 uh, which uh, sorry, uh, which of the, uh, which is the correct answer uh, using the chord given below? Uh, okay. So, uh, one, two, and three only. One, three, and four only. Two and four. Which are the correct statements? That is the uh, thing which you need to identify using the codes. Okay. Uh, uh, in, uh, you can type in the chat section. Okay. Uh, options are coming. Coming. Okay. Okay. Glad to uh, see many positive responses. Most of you are getting it correct. Okay, so which statement is wrong here? Option four. Option four is wrong. Okay, so when you actually the most easy type of questions are the questions as, uh, with statements. In this, there are four statements, right? Like the statement based questions are very easy to mark correctly. So we are suppose when statement comes, what, what, this is something like a true or false. Okay, there will be different statements. All you need to do is to identify the correct statements or identify the false statements so let's uh, you know your job is to identify the false statement and uh, as you rightly said statement 4 is wrong why statement 4 is wrong anand any idea like why statement 4 is wrong sir i think geostationary orbit is more closer to the earth not this much far uh, not exactly. Uh, Ambika? Ambika, are you there? Pragati? Yeah, you cannot sit uh, and silent, okay? If you are attending the class, you have to answer. Sir? Pragati, yeah, yeah, please go ahead. There is no, uh, there, I mean, uh, there is no shame to uh, make a mistake. You can make Sir, actually, the numerical data ah. is wrong. Uh, which one? Numerical Ambika. data is wrong, actually. Uh, can you come again? I, I didn't get it. Which data? The fourth option is wrong because of the numerical data, sir. Because of it's the numerical data. Around 35,000 kilometers, yes. Okay, okay. So what so is the, the correct answer? Is 36,000 kilometers. 36,000 kilometers, correct. Correct, you are right. Like This is another another thing with, with respect to UPC. Usually, when you see uh, particularly science questions or any questions with having a numerical data involved, please be cautious because there, there is a high chance that can be wrong. Not every time, but there can there can be high chance that can be wrong, okay? And as you all rightly said, Ambika, you said it right. Uh, there is a uh, the wrong there is a wrong data with respect to the uh, that numerical data is wrong, and the actual figure also somebody told who who told it correctly. Thirty six thousand, sir. Sir, it was me, Banu. Banu, Banu told it correct. Thirty six thousand kilometers. But uh, there is an interesting thing thing here, okay? Do you know how UPC put it? Uh, I mean, what is the uh, how UPC uh, interchange the values? I mean, the correct and statement here is the orbit is at an altitude of two 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 three six miles. Okay, they have just changed the units. Instead of miles, they gave kilometer. Okay, they just changed the units. But so so the value is different, right? If anything is wrong in a statement, that statement is entirely wrong. So here, what happened? Instead of uh, uh, miles, they gave it kilometer. If if it was if it is 
it should be expressed in kilometers then the actual value is something around 36000 kilometers okay no uh, that that 36000 should be the actual value but instead of 36000 they mentioned a different numerical value so this is a point which everyone if if you not not it know that technique this is one thing which you should be always knowing uh upsc has to somehow make certain statements wrong okay everybody of you agree with that because in in case of statement case questions somehow they need to make certain question statements wrong so how how can you make a question state statement wrong there should be some changes in that right the true statement has to be made false by adding certain things or taking out certain things or changing certain values something that 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 should be done and one of the easiest way to make a correct statement wrong is to change the numerical values. All of you agree with that? Yes, sir. All of you agree? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. So this is one such type of question. So whenever you see a numerical value question, I'm not saying that that will be always wrong, but you take extra care with that kind of questions and see is, is that numerical value correct or not. Usually, that there is a high chance that numerical value can be false. Okay, in this case also, the numerical value is false, and the correct value is thirty-six thousand uh, kilometer. But if it is expressed in miles, this this statement would have been correct. Okay. Okay. Then let's move to the next question. Uh, okay. So this is another question from 2011 based on science and technology itself. Uh, who will read it out? Anand, can you read it out? Anand? Yes, sir. Yes, at, at present, scientists can determine the arrangements or relative positions of genes or DNA sequences on a chromosome. How does this knowledge benefit us? One, it is possible to know the pedigree of livestock. Two, it is possible to understand the cause of all human diseases. It is possible to uh, develop disease-resistant animal breeds. Uh, okay. Which of the following statements above is correct? Okay. Uh, please uh, start typing in the chat section. Yeah, of course. Thanks a lot, Anna. Thanks. Is all thinking yourself, or if somebody else has typed type something, everybody is following the same notion, or all all or all, 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 all of you thinking? Okay, I'm I'm just starting with UPC previous year question papers. I, we will not limit with previous year question papers. Okay, we'll deal with different sets and not just UPC question papers. Other questions we'll also take, but this is just a starting. Okay, so uh, uh, most of you have correctly answered. Uh, most of you have correctly answered. Good. Okay, uh, who will say the answer out loud? Who will say? Sir, I think it is option C. Option C. Option C. Sir. One line three only, right? Yes, so sir. that means option, one statement is wrong. I mean, if you are saying that first statement and the third statement are correct, yes, and sir. the second and statement is second wrong. Second statement correct? is wrong. Second yes. statement is wrong. Why it is wrong? Uh, because all is there, all human diseases. An extreme statement. Yeah, extreme statement. Extreme. Second is very extreme. Very extreme. Excellent. 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 So now it is. When I was myself an aspirant in the initial years, nobody was there to uh, help me like this. Like uh, nobody told that all extreme statements are more likely to be wrong, okay? okay? But nowadays, everybody knows that these techniques you know, huh? a certain techniques you know, at least. Uh, okay, uh, but this is what you all uh, told is correct. Uh, the statement is extreme. I mean, it has added a keyword, all. It is possible to understand the causes of all human diseases. It's very rare, like just by doing the DNA sequencing. Uh, all human diseases may not be possible, but maybe some genetic diseases uh, can be possible, no, no, no. right? But, but, but there are diseases. 
Uh, sir, uh, especially science and technology questions, uh, we need to prove something. So it's like uh, without a proof, they are telling for, for all human diseases. So it's like likely to be a wrong statement. Really. Science Correct. needs the proper proof. The, uh, yeah, uh, we sh I, I shall make it further simple. The case is that I think from the UPC uh, UPC perspective, okay, think that you are a person who who is setting question papers, okay. Uh, think from his or her mentality. Think from the mentality of a person who is setting question papers. Somehow certain statement has to be made wrong, na? Hundred percent wrong. How can a, a question statement be made hundred percent wrong? There should be some changes made to it so that it's it's highly unlikely to be true. So they have to use certain extreme keywords in certain questions. They, that's the only way that can be done. Okay. If anybody is asking me whether uh, the uh, the uh, role of intelligent elimination techniques is getting limited, I would say definitely no. That the the scope will be definitely there because that's the only way UBC can prepare questions. Okay. They might do some tricks with certain questions, but ultimately with certain questions. They don't have any other option other than making uh, some extreme statements or changing the numerical values or certain other things, other techniques they have to do. Once we know that that code, I mean, if you can crack that, you are automatically achieving, uh, arriving at the right answer itself. Okay, that is the case. So in this case, it's direct. Like all human diseases, it's a very extreme statement because by even by analyzing DNA sequence, we may not be able to. Uh, I understand uh, the reason for a infectious disease or anything like that. But, but genetic disease, yeah, of course, yes. But other thing, no. So uh, all of you have correctly answered this. And uh, let me ask you, uh, do we need a break or should I continue? Uh, uh, it's it's tough to sit in a, a two-hour class, an online class, even though it's a question answer piece. I think I shall do one thing. I, I will give a short break. I mean, for uh, two minutes or three minutes, uh, and uh, you can take a break and come back. So you'll be you'll also be much more refreshed to take the next set of questions. All right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes. Okay, thanks, sir. Thanks a lot.
Uh, I am back. Uh, we can start. Uh, I think uh, nobody should feel offended if I have not called your name yet. Okay, because I am I am able to see only a few participants now. But you, you can, if any of you, uh, you can take the initiative to speak uh, voluntarily because uh, uh, that is the right way to get into the group. Okay, if you start speaking, uh, you will automatically uh, uh, get more attention. The the one ones who are speaking will uh, get into my attention. Uh, so please start speaking and uh, let's move to the next question okay you can see me right yes sir okay great yes, sir. yeah so you have answered this correct and uh, this is a question taken from uh, clear eyes current affairs capsules okay uh, so this is not a, a previous year UPC question question this is taken from clear eyes current affairs capsule can you uh, see it or is it is the phone too small for you? Some, somebody from the laptop should be able to see it. Uh, you can see, right? So uh, who will read this out? Uh, anybody can take the initiative to read, uh, read this. So can I? Yeah, sure, please. National Initiative for Proficiency in Reading with the Industry. Yeah, please, please read. Uh, Consider the following statements about the recently launched National Initiative for Proficiency in Reading with Understanding and Numeracy Mission, Nippun Bharat. It aimed, option one, it aims at ensuring that every child in the country necessarily attains foundational literacy and numeracy by the end of grade three, by 2026 to 27. Option two, only government schools and government aided schools are considered for this mission. Option three, one of the targets of the mission is that a child should be able to read 45 to 60 word, words per minute and at least 60 words per minute correctly by the end of grade two and three respectively from an age appropriate unknown text with comprehension and clarity. Which of the above statements is or correct? Okay, uh, thanks a lot, thanks a lot. And one thing which I would like to tell you all is that uh, this is uh, this is a question taken from Clear Eyes Current Affairs Capsule. That is a red color ebook in PDF format, you, which you can download for free. All aspirants can download for free from Clear Eyes online store. Okay, so uh, the, the, for every month, month we will release a set of fifty questions, uh, uh, which, is, which are based on current affairs initiatives from, uh, and we'll touch mostly the government schemes and things like that uh, in that uh, red ebook so this is a ready uh, red, the red ebook is called clear eyes current affairs capsules or ccc so uh, a few of the uh, uh, booklets are yet to be released i mean from for the last two or three months uh, a booklets are to be released that will uh, release shortly uh, so now um, who will answer uh, try to answer you can type in the chat section regarding this nipun bharat you are familiar with this scheme right nipun bharat Okay, great. Are you all sure? Is the answer C? Any yes, different sir. opinion? Different opinion? As one and two are contradictory. Yeah, yes. Himanshu, very great, great point. Himanshu says that uh, statement one and statement two are contradictory. So only one statement can be correct. Correct. That's my another point. Like if you see two contradictory statements, that itself shows that only one of the statement can be correct. Like everything cannot be correct. And then look at the options. Then uh, is there any option like that? That is one way of solving questions where you can be, uh, you are not able to find the answer. If you find any answer, all questions in UPC problems can be solved in one way or the other. Okay. Don't lose your heart if you see a topic which you are not familiar. You may not be familiar with Nibun Bharat. But look at the options, look, read the statements, you will find a way to answer it. Okay, there are many shortcuts for that. You will find a way. So the only thing is that you need not, don't lose your mind, uh, be fresh and think, uh, think, loud, think out loud. Uh, okay, you all, all agree with me? Like uh, what is the reason why the second statement is wrong? Um, because it says every child in the country should attain foundational literacy and that, that uh, is, all uh, children. Oh, correct, correct. correct. And but and is, is statement one not... correct? Is statement one correct? Even yes, though it's sir. an extreme statement, is that correct? 
statement has so. an extreme statement every uh, child and also there is a number still that statement is correct statement 1 is correct i think Stat statement 1 is correct okay i am also agree so uh, that 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 also thing you need to keep keep in mind okay not every extreme statement is wrong you need to apply your mind okay uh, connect it with other statements you are right like what you told is right statement 1 is correct what the actually in this question only one statement is wrong that is statement 2 why is statement 2 is wrong because there can be private schools right like only government schools and government aided schools are considered for this private schools are also considered that is not mentioned right so statement 2 is wrong uh, leaving statement 2 uh, what is the answer uh, what is the answer uh can somebody who is unmuted please mute okay uh i am not able to find out who who is not unmuted okay uh what is the answer as of now please be loud um option c sir one and three option c everybody clear right yes sir yes sir yeah. okay please read about nibun bharat okay since we don't have time i am not going to the details of this scheme because we have lot of questions to cover uh, this is another question with respect to the uh, scheduled tribes and other forest uh, dwellers uh, 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 act okay uh, 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 no need to read it loud uh, because uh, we are running short of time so uh, you can just go through the question yourself and uh, please mention the answer in the chat session with reference to scheduled tribes and other traditional forest dwellers act 2006 consider the following statements the act empowers forest dwellers to access and use forest resources in a manner that traditionally accustomed to that does not right individual rights of forest dwelling tribal persons recognizes the socio cultural rights of forest dwelling communities which of the following statements is a fact is it uh, d or is it c uh, most of you are going with b yeah uh, it's it's actually c okay it's actually c yeah, the act uh, recognize individual rights as well okay so uh, i hope uh, i i shall explain it this question is connected with the uh, scheduled tribes act okay scheduled tribes and forest dwellers act so uh, all of you uh, the confusion is only with respect to statement 2 uh, uh, you you are all clear that statement 1 is correct and statement 3 is also correct correct so the statement what does the what is the statement 2 states it states that the act does not recognize the individual rights of forest dwelling tribal persons which is a wrong statement okay so be uh, cautious when whenever you see a negative statement this is a act does not okay negative statements uh, when there is a keyword of a negative addition addition like no or not we uh, double check that there can be a case that that statement may be wrong okay so this actually this act uh, does recognize individual rights that is the reason why statement 2 uh, is wrong so what is the final answer c is the final answer okay great so uh, that's it uh, for for a, a sample questions from uh, clearize uh, current affairs capsules now let let me uh, discuss a few questions from clearize most probable prelims question pdf sets this is this is an another ebook which is a green which is green colored pdf books which we offer for free for a uh, clearize prelims to series subscribers you might be having this so uh, this is a question from clearize most probable prelims questions can uh, can you go through this question and answer uh, what is the uh, answer of this oh surprise uh, most of you know this huh? okay keep uh, keep typing if somebody if any of you in this group if if not knowing the answer don't feel disheartened okay uh, the, because of the peer pressure can be immense like you you see and somebody is typing the chat don't feel that they know the answer i am not knowing and don't start immediately going after books and books okay don't do that sit in the session during the session you will be learning you will be learning the art of cracking problems okay 
don't uh, don't go behind uh, books now books or any study materials don't no don't worry no don't worry uh, don't worry anybody if, if you are not knowing the answer there is nothing to worry there will be questions in upsc prelims which you are unsure uh, but uh, that that's okay you can uh, you can go wrong in 30 questions i have already to told you right like 30 questions you can go wrong uh, uh, okay uh, uh, manisha what is the answer manisha hello okay uh, who will answer sheetal can you answer sheetal you there otherwise i will call the names of uh, aspirants who have already answered vikash you there are you in a position to answer okay uh, Siri, can you answer? Um, I'm not sure about this question, sir. Okay, that's okay. I, I haven't checked. That's okay. That's okay. This is, this, so is a, this is an, yeah. This it's is not so a question that can be easily answered if you if you don't have prior information. This is not an easy question to answer. Only if you know, it can be answered because the intelligent elimination techniques that finds more application with respect to statement based questions. This is not a statement based yes. question and uh, it's not that easy uh, but, and uh, the answers uh, who I will call another person. Okay. So uh, yeah, because you have typed, right? Why don't you have, uh, are you not in a position to use the voice chat? If you're in office, that's fine. It's like, okay, Jayant, can you use the mic option? Kajal? Oh. Who is talking? Yeah, somebody can take the. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Please. Sir, can I? Yeah, sure, please. Sir, as uh, if even the answer is not sure, the Harike oh. is in a Punjab, and Bular and Pong Dam are relatively in a uh, not that high altitude. So remaining is Sokar only. Great, great. That's and great. The and the name which suggests so and all are uh, Ladakhi names. So that might oh. be the answer. Even I didn't know, but the uh, prob probable answer is A. Excellent, excellent way of thinking. That's how you should be dealing with this question. So uh, everybody can learn from uh, your name is Vaibhavi, right? Yes, sir. Vaibhavi, sir. Vaibhavi, right? Uh, yeah, the answer is so carved land. Correct. That's how you should be thinking. Okay. The, uh, you need to think in that direction. Yeah, UPC, UPC is all about the common sense. Even prelims and mains also. This is uh, this is common sense is what works. Okay. So you know uh, now uh, know the answer. Now let's move to the next question. Uh, with respect to operation twist okay this is an economy related question uh, uh, okay uh, please try to solve this question with, re with regard to operation twist consider the following statements it is the process of selling government securities rather than buying them by the rbi this was first tried in 1961 as a way to strengthen the us dollar and stimulate the cash flow to the economy rbi carries out the omo through the commercial banks and does not directly deal with the public which of the above statement is or are correct Okay, one thing I observed is that uh, with respect to UPC questions, uh, most of you are familiar with the UPC questions and most of you are getting correct. But if you are getting a new set of questions, some of you are finding it difficult. That's an observation which I, I have made based on the observation I am getting it in the chat section. Uh, but that's good. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, you need to get practiced uh, with the uh, probable questions as well. This is a probable question. Operation twist. Uh, Great. So, who can explain the concept of operation twist? Uh, explain uh, uh, literally in using vocally. Uh, don't deal with the uh, ignore this question. But who can explain the concept of operation twist? Any economics graduates or anybody? Anybody can take the initiative. Sir, operation twist was. Uh done by Reserve Bank of India to bring down the bond yields of oh. the longer maturity. Correct. That's correct. So what is the process actually? Reserve Bank is investing on uh, long-term bonds or short-term bonds?
what happens reserve by buys long term bonds or short term bonds what is the exact process happening long term bonds huh? and reserve bank sells short term bonds correct yes, that is the process in in operation twist actually this is a twisting action and it's a, uh, it's a buying and selling of securities sir Correct. buying and selling of securities and if any of you have any uh, doubts regarding the operation twist there is an article in clearize regarding operation twist and there is a video also you can go to clearize.com search operation twist plus clearize in google you will find that article there is a detailed article what what exactly is the process with respect to operation twist and in the operation twist what happens is that i shall explain uh, reserve bank buys long term uh, bonds and sells short term bonds okay that is a process so there is a buying and selling uh and the first statement is it correct or wrong it is wrong statement it is a wrong statement because the wrong you statement. mentioned that first statement is wrong so first statement is wrong and uh ruling out first then what is only left just if if you correctly identify uh, that the first statement is wrong you can easily uh, mark the question correct so leave yes, out sir. all buying and selling both are there right yeah close all options with uh, statement one what is left option number b option b is left only option b is left then you can safely mark the answer right so just with just with the information you have with respect to only one answer you are able to uh, arrive at the right answer that's how you should thinking in the exam hall okay so there are questions where you will be 100% sure i mean you you could have eliminated all the three options and there there can be questions where you be able to eliminate only Uh, two options. Uh, uh, then there will be fifty-fifty chance between them. Then there are questions you eliminated only one option. Okay, but in in this particular question, you have eliminated only one question uh, as wrong. But still, you directly you are able to arrive at the correct answer. Correct. Uh, okay. Yes, sir. So, yeah. Yes. Oh, so the the answer is actually B. Uh, two and three. i planned this session actually uh, for uh, the, i mean 6 to 8 maybe we will extend little bit after 8 that is fine right like if sure sir sure okay. sure okay thanks oh i i got an immediate response first for the first time in this session i am very happy that uh, you want you like this session thank thanks a lot for that i appreciate the quick responses like that okay for all questions and everything great thanks a lot and uh, now having covered Uh, uh my uh, this is an introductory session right this is the first session which we are dealing with plum smart booster my aim is to give an idea like how this session will be going on from the next one month for the next days how it will be we will be dealing uh, previous year upsc question papers questions from clearize sources that is uh, clearize current affairs capsules clearize most probable problems question sets uh, clearize problems test series and certain other questions hand picked by me from certain areas that will also be there in the Uh, uh this particular uh, session and i i will not be the sole faculty who will be dealing this uh clums mars mars booster series i will be definitely there to guide you but there will be other faculties for also for other subjects but i am uh, dealing all subjects together in in my classes i will take all all subjects together and another thing which we will uh, discuss is the repeated question areas and also we will deal, deal the application of intelligent elimination techniques that we have already started applying many intelligent elimination techniques we have already started applying but in the course course duration we will deal the techniques as such separately uh, that will also uh, help you answer more questions but now this is another area which i would like to include as part of our program that is a repeated question areas so with respect to upsc there are certain areas that are repeated year after year so they are high priorities areas but some of you might be knowing certain repeated areas uh, what i intend to do is that i will take one repeated question area in one day and i will try to uh, uh, get many previous year question papers from that area and then help you understand the relevance of that area that's it in one one day one one area will be taken in the next day another area will be taken so do you have some idea like some repeated question areas can you uh, aspirants can you fail, uh, help your peers by helping uh, like which are the some of the repeated question areas with respect to upsc exam any of you can go ahead so the constitution making process and the uh, acts constitution making process and the acts okay like the government of india Sir, in quality okay. fundamental rights, directive principles are very important, sir. And okay. uh, that topics okay. from this every year questions can be seen. Fundamental rights and DPSPs. Okay. DPSP. Okay. You're, you're right. Um, sir, agricultural policies. 
agricultural policy agriculture is an important topic so questions from artificial intelligence also artificial intelligence you find found many questions from artificial intelligence uh huh i found about the questions which one they can also be you can from uh, environment and ecology environment and ecology which area i i mean not subject i mean which area under economic environment and ecology any specific can be uh, uh, sir special one is uh, biodiversity biodiversity yeah correct sir pollutants specifically pollutants and ill effects on uh, health sir great 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 pollutants uh, usually pollution is a repeatedly asked a question area yeah. you are correct yeah. pollutants yeah that's correct so various questions from economics like cash reserve ratio and indexes and like cpi inflation measure like that question uh yeah uh, uh, connected with ratios in uh, economy questions are coming that's correct that's correct so economy then, related questions are quite tough to understand sir that we can uh, easily solve that. like i shall help you with economy don't worry yeah. like economic concepts you want to know the concepts it it is easy actually but economic yeah, questions are now 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 in a moving in a different direction like not not in the previous years it's 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 now touching areas like money supply etc uh, but exactly. that that we can we can deal Okay. Sir. Any any other important question? You say I am getting a great response from aspirants like that. I I am sure that will help fellow aspirants as well. If you sir, if you have identified uh, any other questions, yeah, please. So like I don't understand uh, uh, the use of focusing on these areas because oh. the subjects are like constant in all the papers, right? In all the past ten years, the same subjects: polity, economy, Correct. history, geography. But areas are different in each and every year, so so. Areas can be different, but uh, but but the case is that certain areas. With, uh, what what you told is correct. Like with respect to general studies paper one in films, like we have history, geography, polity, etc. And the weightage with respect to subjects also vary year after year. That also you are right. Like uh, yeah, but certain, subjects certain, are constant, no, sir. So subjects, subjects are, are constant, constant, but weightage can be different. Like in certain areas, uh, there may be few questions from geography. There can be more questions from polity. That is sir. But subjects are constant. That uh, that is also you are right. But the case is that if yeah, you analyze previous year, right? Areas, how do we focus on areas? Because it can differ every year, right? But still, certain areas. I mean, with respect to polity, not areas in polity are equally important. Okay, for example, polity is a big subject. There are areas like UPC or uh, uh, like uh, 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 emergency provisions are there, or central state relations are there. But when, with respect to certain like uh, peripheral areas in, in polity. certain areas like fundamental rights or dpsps or parliament or judiciary that is more important so that that prioritization is there i i am saying that because if you analyze subject wise sub categorization uh, certain from certain areas more and more questions are coming certain okay. areas so that is that is where you should be giving focus otherwise we will be uh, if we have limited time we we may not be able to finish every subject in detail but if you just focus on a few areas from subject of course we are right in the sense that uh, that may not be the trend every year it can vary but as a smart work the best thing is to do for prioritize prioritize and go for areas from where repeat uh, uh, repeated questions are coming you will understand that in the next slide itself uh, in the in the coming slide in 30 minutes you will see like uh, the importance of prioritize okay. sir medal sir medal is mainly mainly key terms they are asking sir Every yeah, debate, all I mean, like that questions and all every year. There are one or two. Yeah, some some terms which which we are unfamiliar with respect to medieval culture. That is yes, a repeated question. Even even right? Buddhism, sir. Buddhism also terms they are using. Buddhism, Jainism. Oh, Buddhism, right. Jainism is a repeated theme, right? All of yeah. you agree. Right. Every year there will be a question. Despite the weightage at given to different section, most of the year UPC we will not leave topic like Jainism and Buddhism. Correct. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Now you know. So so you know uh, many of the question areas you have repeatedly uh, mentioned. And if you want me to discuss any particular repeated question area, please let me know. You can uh, uh, if uh, you can contact me by dropping an email to our support email ID. Our support email ID is contact us at clearize group. Okay. If you want, if you have some suggestions or something that needs to be discussed along the films come. i mean prelims marks booster program uh, or any repeated area question questions from repeated area that needs to be discussed in the coming sessions you can drop an email uh, we, if if relevant we will take it, take that up and discuss so having discussed that having understood uh, some of the repeated question areas let me just focus in today's session with just one question area then uh, tomorrow we will deal another question area and the question repeated question area which i would like to bring to your attention is this 
important acts enacted by the indian parliament okay uh, this this is the uh, one question area which i would like to bring to your attention to why i am bringing this to your attention is because in 2019 just one year more than 11 questions i mean 22 marks in upsc prelims out of the 200 i mean more than 22 to be frank if you include many other areas also under this the number is actually much bigger so majority of the questions connected not only with polity i mean uh, the acts are not just with polity for example uh, uh, the biodiversity act or the environment protection act can be uh, seen from the environment angle as well like there can be acts connected with the economy also like frbm act is an act connected with the economy right so the acts passed by parliament and even history also like charter act or something that is an act connected with history so act is the act different acts passed by parliament not only the acts acts bills orders regulations those kind of things is a repeated question area with respect to upsc prelim this is something this pattern i personally observed after 2019 prelims because i found almost many many questions are somehow connected with the acts passed by the parliament having realized that i have written a book which combined 100 important acts that transformed india okay i am not just uh, uh, written this book and then coming with the questions connected with this act i have written this book only because i have found that such a trend is there in the upsc prelims so this is a part of our initiative to address the gaps in the upsc preparation right i initially told when 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 starting the session clear eyes always try to bridge the gap bridge bridge the gap in the upsc preparation in our own way whatever humble way we can address the gap and help aspirants we'll try to do that so when i found there is a vacuum in this area the same way i have come with the other book with respect to the important judgments that is that was mainly for upsc mains for a validation in upsc mains there was no book which which compile the important judgments that's how the first book was written but this is the second book this was written just because main, mainly on the prelims perspective but this is equally useful in mains as well because it touches all the papers general studies paper 1 2 2 3 and 4 with respect to mains it's written in a mains uh, perspective with respect to the organization of the acts but with respect to prelims in 2019 11 questions are uh, are being asked we'll see like how how such such important is given by upsc with respect to acts uh, can you guess why uh, the acts are so relevant for uh, upsc any any idea uh, uh, just i will mute all and i will then come back uh, uh, can you hear my voice and you can unmute and speak okay who whoever wants to speak you can unmute and speak sir is this new edition Uh, this there is only one edition because this oh. was released last year okay, okay. so this all is this all is right, last sir. year and but that is relevant for this year as well yeah yeah because, okay, because of the covid situation no not many acts are enacted by the parliament uh, recently exactly yeah. yeah but this is relevant for this year as well okay sir. Uh, and uh, and good to know that some of you have read the important judgments book and uh, thanks for informing me and but i just want you to know that why acts are so much relevant for upsc and uh, like we are going to become a future administrator so upsc wants to really know that uh, students are well aware of the acts passed by the parliament uh, excellent, so excellent. that they can excellent excellent that's the main point that's the main point correct you are you, you got it correct because you are expected to be future civil servants who will be mostly connected with the laws of the state right you are you will be yeah. dealing with the mainly with the laws you will yes. be dealing with the implementation of the laws okay so you should be knowing about the acts connecting different areas not just with polity but with the environment society history uh, culture internal security cyber security economy everything you you are we are all bound by laws and civil servants are more connected with laws so upsc being the agency who who uh, which is trying to recruit you to the civil service they will check your information connect with the laws around you so this is one in main area but there was until i wrote this book there was no area no no such book was addressing this particular need okay so this is something which we do from the end of clear eyes which whatever little team we have we try to address a gap like this i am not pushing you to buy this book but i am just mentioning that you will see the importance of this after going through the next set set of slides let me take you directly through the questions and see whether you are able to answer most of these questions are actually at a higher level and 
that is not usually covered by any of the other books okay in the market that's how the gap comes and that's how the cutoff is reducing we'll see how it goes this question you will be knowing and this question you will be knowing uh, if you have studied history you will be knowing uh, this is a connected with the charter act okay uh, can any of you try to find the answer you can mention the uh, uh, i mean chat session i hope this session will extend until 8:30 i'm sorry for that uh, because we have put so many questions it may not be easy to wind by 8 it will extend to 8:30 so who will answer in the no chat problem. session first yeah thanks a lot option a 1 and 2 only option a 1 and 2 only okay okay uh all all of you are agreeing with that any different opinion uh c 193 only okay uh option a and c you are confused between a and c uh who said the answer a uh, i didn't get your na name who said a sir it's me bhai bhavi bhai bhavi you are correct bhai bhavi yeah you 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 mentioned it correct you are correct a is the answer uh, a is the answer a is the answer and statement 3 is wrong why statement 3 is wrong this is about 1813 okay and it's mentioned like revenues of the india were now controlled by the british parliament that is a, a not that's that's cannot be true right like in 1813 that is even before the 1857 revolt right like uh, uh, even the 1858 act is not yet passed the in, in the revenues of india under the direct control of british parliament that that was not the case even after 1858 also uh, uh, we cannot say that revenues of india were controlled by british parliament because we had princely states and different uh, entities in india okay so statement 3 cannot be uh, true and if we just eliminate statement 3 what is left out One and two, only one and two is left out. So you will automatically arrive at the correct answer. All of you. Sir, uh, uh, sir uh, one yeah, more please. basic. Uh, sir, one more basic understanding is like Charter Act are of primary. I mean, uh, initial acts were known as a Charter Act, and the revenues of India were, I mean, uh, to be controlled by a British Parliament. It, there, there should be the uh, major time. Correct, correct, correct. After seventeen sixty four, there must be more time for that. Correct, correct, correct. And uh, that was never the case. Like revenues of India are now controlled by British Parliament. That is not the not the case. So uh, we can rule out statement three, and we'll be left out only with one option. Okay. And I am just repeating. If any of you are not able to find the correct answer, there is no need to feel disheartened. Uh, that happens, and uh, there, and don't go behind any books or immediately or or just by closing this session. Don't have to go behind books and rush to any materials. just attend this session practice practice more questions you will learn it okay there will be always questions which you are unsure i am just going through the next question uh okay this is not an easy question okay this is not an easy question because you are not familiar with this particular act that's why this is not an easy question have you ever uh, read about judges inquiry act 1968 in any textbooks no sir no sir uh, yeah that's why this question upsc ask questions from these sort of areas i mean this is connected with one particular question. act yeah this is a tough question but uh, but if you look at the options you can eliminate it even if it is a tough question you can eliminate and find uh, find the correct answer you, you don't have to uh, go and read this act judges act 1968 you don't have to read even in the book also i have not included judges act 1968 okay Uh, mm -hmm. we have even we, without that we already have 100 acts if we include try to include all acts that book will be something very bulky so we uh, even uh, otherwise also we had more than uh, i mean 100 acts we already have but without knowing anything we try to solve this question So tough question, even to guess. 
tough question even to guess but uh, yeah. the, I, i shall give two clues to answer this okay be yeah. always careful when you see a negative statement hmm? when there is a cannot do not does not something like that be extremely careful and see if that statement is wrong sir i think option in uh, first statement is wrong sir correct first statement is wrong yes, and so, so we, can eliminate, uh, we can eliminate we can eliminate option a and d so we'll be left with option b uh, that is 3 and 3 and 4 only and uh, can you eliminate option 2 as well Uh, uh, have you you that that thing you can do i mean whatever you have studied so far with that yes, you sir, can sir. eliminate option 2 uh? option 2 also you, you you have read the indian polity yeah, by yeah, yeah. mega uh? and no. you, you have learned about indian constitution constitution but you might have already, might be already yes, knowing yes. okay no, okay no, when no, you no, read no, about no. constitution of india have you ever uh, read about the definition and details of what constitutes incapacity and proved misbehavior No, that no, definition no. of details have you ever found in indian constitution no sir no no, no. correct everybody agree yeah so so two can be eliminated yes. one can be eliminated so if you are eliminating one and two what is left three and b and c three and four yeah. three and four only what is the then what is the answer choice <laughs> either b option or either c option c one 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 can be eliminated two can be eliminated okay so then what is left out it can uh, it, it can be b or, b or c it, it, it can be a b or c okay c but c the, c but the fourth statement is also correct okay fourth mm-hmm. statement and correct and the third statement is correct so at least uh, with just a little bit of work you are able to bring down your chances of making it correct to 50% right you have eliminated two options that itself is a great sign right now yeah. we can mark we, there is chance of 50 50 chance of getting it correct Uh, then most of you will make it correct like uh, the fourth statement is actually correct that's a very long statement they have put in a very long statement usually uh, there is high chance that it's a correct answer uh, all the details they have mentioned like uh, that's a like i mean three lines have they have uh, uh, marked it so that's a correct also that's like there's not a too artificially complicated statement that's a correct also so the answer Sir, is even actually... the first statement also the second statement is wrong also even the first statement if you eliminate the second statement is automatically gets wrong correct correct that that that's also the case that is also that's also the case so but i am not saying that every time a negative statement is wrong i am not saying but whenever you say uh, uh, words like does not do not cannot something like that a negative statement is mostly a wrong statement mostly eh? most of the times okay okay in actually in actually if you say if something uh, against what i am saying now comes don't come after me but that is a Uh, but that's a usual thing okay i mean what i'm saying is it will be it will be the case in 90% of the cases in 10% of the cases it can be uh, either reverse but we cannot uh, uh, take we have to take take chances then only we can write uh, i mean we can write 90 plus questions we have somehow have to take chances anyway you are preparing for upsc so you are all uh, taking a big risk right we all know that the chance of success in the upsc csc is less than 1% and we are uh, all preparing for an exam with just, just less than 1% of success and 99% chance of failure so in all these questions there is 25% chance of success so they just take risk okay anyway you are taking a much bigger risk by attempting this exam so take risk and attempt the questions hmm? answer c 3 and 4 is the correct answer and uh, this is another question this is also connected with an act okay prevention of uh, disqualification act parliament act 1959 hmm? so uh, the previous was connected with judges this is connected judiciary this is connected with parliament 1959 yeah. try to find the answer a yes sir a which statement can be directly eliminated third third one statement Option number 3 not well defined statement third well defined can be direct... as extreme sir yes, sir correct correct, well correct. Uh, since with your already existing information with respect to indian polity itself The, uh, the the office of profit we have not found any definition of the office of profit in constitution of yeah, india so that uh, well defined is looking something too exaggerating so it can be defined but it's well defined something yeah not but so it, but it, but still it's not even defined okay that's the case yeah, but, yeah, well defined, not, yeah, yeah. But, but but your point is correct well defined is a too exaggeration uh, so just just cutting the third statement you are, you are left with what yes. only one right right then, which is option then Correct option. One and two, right? A. One and two. 
but this is also connected with the topic acts right my point is that this is also a repeated area which is connected with the act the, the case is that even without reading the act you can uh, answer it i mean the prevention of disqualification act you don't need to re read that act to answer this question but the area is the, again from acts right all of you right. agree right sir agree it's connected with the legislature only correct yeah then the other, another thing connected with the act it's connected with the indian forest act and scheduled tribes act two acts are connected in the same question okay uh, it's not an easy question to answer to be frank it's a clear D one two and three, most probably one, two and three. Everybody on the same answer. So no idea. Third statement is wrong. I am getting different comments. B B. Okay. Uh, anybody can give me a clue why? Uh, what is? Uh, which is the wrong statement and why it is a wrong statement sir one and two are definitely correct but there is a uh, confusion in third statement uh, your name are you vaibhavi yes sir yes sir okay i am uh, okay okay uh, 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 that's not exactly the case sir any other Hello, sir. Any, any other input sir uh, oh. sir i think the first statement is wrong why that uh, grown on forest areas like forest okay. areas Yes. Oh. I think oh. that will be. Uh, that's a, a valid point, but what a, what exactly is your point? Then, Bamboo is recently added. Sorry, sorry. Right. So they are allowing the this, forest. This question came filter. in 2019. Okay, think from that perspective. Okay, this question is in 2019. Mm -hmm. So you are very close to the answer. Uh, what exactly is the point? uh some amendment was there yeah. i mean uh yeah uh, let's let let let's um uh, bambu is not a uh, no that that's not the case anybody else any valid points you all think think and try to find answer brainstorm so that will be a good exercise for you uh, hope this exercise is helpful right like you you are getting an exam hall feeling right <laughs> yes sir correct it's a lot to know lot of things sir good thanks thanks a lot like uh, that's the intention of this like making it interactive so you have to think and think along with your peers you will getting a feeling that you are sitting in the exam hall try to find the answer in a moment uh, that will help that that learning process is much more effective that's my personal uh, uh, i mean that's what my research shows like that will be much more effective so i i will just give the clue okay uh, in previous uh, statements uh, upsc have uh, has made a statement wrong by adding a keyword not or cannot does not do not okay in mm. this statement they have taken out a keyword i mean they have taken out the negative word and made yeah. it positive okay yeah. that's the clue then can you think i think that uh, grown on non forest areas is Uh, exactly okay. habib yeah, you are right you are right you are you are the one who was very close and that is the case actually the act statements the actually as per the recent amendment to the indian forest act 1927 uh, it states that forest dwellers have the right to fell the bamboos grown on non forest areas and what the upsc and what the upsc did was to take that non from that statement out okay uh, somehow they have to make the question statement wrong right so what they did they took the word non from the statement so it automatically becomes a wrong statement correct it's a tough question okay it's a tough question i agree uh, uh, so uh, the, you need to be aware of the recent amendment then only it would have been easy to answer this but this is also a question connected with the act it's an environment related question but it's connected with the act all of you clear right so if first statement is wrong what is the answer the other two statements are correct okay. yeah Second either b or c yeah then if the first statement itself is uh, wrong then what is left is only 2 and 
so how to uh, answer these sort of questions if you are unsure that is the next thing right you cannot learn everything and go and try uh, sit for the columns okay yeah read every word uh, like you are uh, you are a detective think that you are a detective okay that is the mentality you should be having okay try to uh, believe that upsc will make a mistake in every statement see if there is any scope of a mistake in one particular statement always be suspicious uh, be, because first timers if you are attempting first timers how many of you are first timers with respect to upsc csc uh, can you um, i mean uh, can you raise hands or Well, just say yes. A, a big yes will be fine. How many of you yes, are first sir. timers? Okay, one hand is raised, and how many? Uh, two. Okay, uh, I think uh, some of you have already returned, and some of you are freshers. Okay, I think most of most of you have already attempted UPC. Okay, then you realize. I think most of you have already attempted. Then you realize that uh, with all the preparation, you are still stuck with these seventies and eighties. Then you need okay. additional support. Yeah, yes, correct. sir. Yes, sir. Yes, great. That's great. But that's okay. That's fine. That happens with UPC. And uh, the case is that uh, with whatever you studied, you may not be uh, anyway not able to solve UPC uh, problems. Okay. So somehow you have to take risk. But the mentality you should be having. That's that's the case. That's the mentality you need to develop. And one thing which I always suggest is that there is a strong chance UPC will make uh, some mistakes or something they will add or delete from the statement to make it wrong. Okay. Your role is to find that out. they can make mistakes in the numbers they can make mistakes in the unit they can add a new adjective to make an extreme statement they will add a keyword like not does not do not or something like that or they they will make a negative statement positive also to make it wrong okay these are some of the tricks the upsc will do hope they are not listening huh? this is in the public session so if uh, let's pray that upsc will not listen to this class but this is how upsc will do usually your job is to uh identify how they are trying to make a question wrong okay so uh in this case actually they have taken out the non word non the word non forest instead of non forest they just mention forest series and that's how that is um, wrong the other other yeah, questions are correct so this is the attitude so will there be uh, will there be time in the, during the upsc paper to like oh. you know get, look at every word like this literally and get no, into you are right you are right actually uh, there is uh, of course time constraints are there there is of course some time constraint but only with proper practice you will be learning this uh, the best method of learning is this is actually going through previous year question papers you will be surprised like how many questions you basically have made it like this this is all previous year you basically question papers but once you go through the previous year question papers you will be getting that practice like oh this is how you basically question and then then you automatically your mind is set with that then you will be immediately able to answer but if a first timer with a proper practice i am i am damn sure that there is there will you will not get time to go like this but with practice your speed will automatically increase that is the uh, i mean that's the intention of training as well with only with training and practice you will be able to do this i strongly suggest all of you to practice previous year upsc question papers in a timed environment at least past 10 years question 2011 2020 you need to practice with negative marking timer uh, uh, then only you will be able to do this okay um, uh, time constraints will be there uh, of course then uh, the uh, hope the answer you got uh, and that is statement 2 and 3 and for a first timer the tendency is that you will think if you, you uh, uh, most of the participants are actually veterans in this group but if you are a first timer the biggest tendency is to mark option d 1 2 and 3 they think that oh upsc is a central agency and they work in ethical way uh, and uh, all questions should be correct right the, the tendency to mark all are correct is very high with respect to first timers okay uh, am i right Th that's the case because they might be getting used to many mock exams or model exams which are not that relevant with the upsc uh, method of teaching they will also put many questions as all are correct or all the above or something like that so that uh, those who took such kind of mock exam the tendency is that they will also mark question when they see option d 1 2 3 mm -hmm. it's more <coughs> sorry they are most likely to mark option b hmm? but being veterans or being attend att attended in this class you should be knowing that you should not mark in such a way the, it, option d 1 2 3 can be an answer but not always okay so sorry please 
uh, why baby can we repeat yeah yeah sir sorry to interrupt but the thing is from last two or three years uh, always science and technology related questions have this tendency to have answer of one to three so how to differentiate and how to take option out uh, like uh, guessing this is right or wrong that's the problem sir in science and technology because answer uh, key also suggests that all the statements are right kind of but science and technology is the easiest thing to solve with respect to problems. I mean, uh, the, the elimination is very fast with respect to science and technology. But that there is no pattern like D one two three in science and technology. But that is no, that is not exactly. I don't agree completely with that. Okay. Uh, but don't uh, I mean uh, don't go with the pattern mentality. I mean okay. one two three or two three or C one two and three one and three only. Okay, but the case right. is what, what my point is that uh, don't if you're a beginner, uh, you are most likely to mark option D one two three. Or, or all option one two three and four you most likely to mark one two three and four you don't see the mistakes in the questions if you're a beginner uh, uh, but that can also be the answer but mm -hmm. you should be marking that option only after thorough examination of all the statements uh, word by word i mean uh, okay. with respect to the keywords okay that's that's okay. my point but science okay. and technology will deal like science and very easy to answer usually the easiest is science and technology because okay. science and technology is fact based right there should be a science and logic behind that so, yeah. uh, so that, that that questions should be uh, made very clear. Then only uh, that will be right or wrong. So it's easy to eliminate that. Right, sir. <clears throat> so this is the another question connected with the acts. All in the same year. Okay, remember these are all questions asked in 2019. This is another question connected with acts, but with a patent act. Indian patent act. <clears throat> This is also not, not that easy. Uh, this also needs some awareness with the acts. This is I, this is a question I think uh, needs an awareness with the Indian Patents Act. I, I think sir, that is included in the book as well. Yeah, please. The statement two is uh, incorrect, sir. Because in India there is intellectual property. It's really no no intellectual appellate board. It's just okay. Yeah, statement two board. is wrong. That is correct. In in statement there is intellectual property appellate board. Every, everybody agree with that. Do you think that there is an intellectual ability, other appellate board, uh, intellectual property appellate board in India? Yes, sir. Yes. Statement two is correct. If statement two is correct, what are the options left? B and D. B and D will be left. Then uh, how to find which? The B and D is, is actually a very tight choice, right? D stands for one, two, and three. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I and here I mean, A and C, right? Uh, no, B, no, D, D will not come. I mean, uh, second statement is correct. Hmm? There is appellate board actually. Yeah. Yeah, there is appellate board. So, mm -hmm. uh, which of the statement is correct? It's so. So two we can eliminate all options with two yes. can be eliminated, right? Like then the one, one will, only A and C will come. Hmm? Ah, sorry, only, A and A, C. Only, right. only A and C will come. And uh, is statement one correct? No, sir, uh, I think they're both. Uh, one and three are mutually contradictory statements. If one will be true, then three will be false. I think that mutually correct, not correct. exist together. Correct. What, what you told Habib is correct. Like, I, one and three are actually contradicting. So only one can be right. Like only either one or three can be correct. What what does the first statement say is that? Right, right, uh, one, right. uh, it's, 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 it's almost contradicting. Uh, I will not say 100% contradicting, but there is a contradiction in that. According to Indian Patents Act, a biological process to create a seed can be patented in India. Uh, so, if a seed grows, what will it, it happens? What will it then become? It plant will become will, a plant. Yeah. It will be, a seed will become a, definitely a plant, right? So, exactly, the third statement exactly. says that plant varieties are not eligible to be patented in India. So, one and three are contradictory in nature as such itself. So, which right, statement right. can be wrong? One. Yeah. one. A, a one, st statement one also is wrong. Statement one is also wrong because according to Indian Patents Act, a biological process to create a seed cannot be patented in India. Okay, uh, it's it, the cannot is made, uh, the note is taken out. Okay, so that's how that statement is made negative by UPC. So only okay. three will be the answer. So the so only uh, right statement is option three. Ah, three only. Three only. So sir, I'm, I'm not able to understand. Uh, sir, I'm, do you want, uh, sorry do you want me to? Sir. 
Yes, sure. Uh, no, 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 it's contradictory statement. I'm not able to understand. So like, how exactly? I shall explain. Okay. Uh, the first statement, what does the first statement say? According to Indian Patents Act, a biological process to create a seed can be patented in India. Okay. And what does this yes. sta third statement say? Plant varieties are not eligible to be patented in India. But uh, uh, analyze the first statement again. Think for a while. Uh, if that can, a, seed, a process to create a seed can be patented in India, uh, uh, the seed will, when what happens when the seed grows? Seed will grow into a plant, right? Yes, sir. Then that that uh, uh, that is then that is slightly contradicting with the statement three, right? Oh, yes, sir. Understood. Understood. Yes, That's sir. it. Not exactly contradicting, but slightly contradicting. If you think from a logical perspective. Okay. Also, the, the biological process cannot be uh, patented for with respect to uh, create a uh, plant or animal. That cannot be patented. The biological process to create a plant or animal. That cannot be patented in India. It's yes, not clear, sir. Okay, great. Now let's move to the next uh, uh, slide. This is another question. Same year, 2019, again connected with acts. Uh, the Environment Protection Act, 1986. And if you ask me, among all the hundred acts in that particular book, okay, which mm -hmm. is the act? which is most important, I will say this act. Environment Protection Act is the most important act. Okay. Uh, and this has multiple rules and regulations connected with this. And UPC will ask on the subsections of this act as well. The, the different rules and regulations connected with this act. So if you don't get time to read all the 100 acts, at least make sure that you read this act and the subsections of this act. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay, now try to find the answer to this question. Sir, I think answer is B, B for Bombay. Why? Uh, because, sir, uh, uh, there are standards of emission like residential area, the hospital area, and industrial area. Some uh, 45 dB and 65 dB kind of something, some categorization is there definitely. And okay. certainly there should be the public participation, uh, ideally, okay. but they have not mentioned actually public participation at such an uh, act. Okay. Okay, correct. You are correct. You are exactly correct. So, by just by knowledge, not by application of any el elimination technique, but by knowledge and some logic, you are able to get to the answer and your answer is correct. Anybody has any objections? Which statement is no, correct? Sir. Second statement is correct. Yes, sir. Statement two is correct and statement one is wrong. Correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, great. You are right. And this is a question. Okay. Uh, this is uh, connected with the question which we have previously discussed. This is connected with not act, but it is it is gone into another sub level that is rules. Okay. Okay. In 2019 questions connected with rules are there, and as per the solid waste management rules 2016 in India, which one of the mm -hmm. following statement is correct? Mm -hmm. And this is connected with the Environment Protection Act itself. Okay. These rules are connected with the Environment Protection Act. There are many different rules, as I told, which are connected with the Environment Protection Act. So, uh, try to find the answer. And also, the rules are in 2016 and question came in 2019, okay? Exactly, exactly. Uh, Aditya, rules and act, difference between rules and acts are, are actually, acts are usually passed by the legislature, I mean parliament. Rules are additions which are made to the act usually from the executive side and mm -hmm. i have uh, in the book important uh, acts that transformed india as as an in the appendix uh, uh, section i have added a list of uh, terms connected with the legislative and judiciary and uh, explain the difference between minute difference between different terms like uh, law law act rule bill regulation uh, order different things are there so you need if yeah. you if you need to understand the dif minute differences between there is not minute actually there are exact differences between all these terms that mm -hmm. that is discussed in that particular book you can get the that answer book is yeah. okay so of, and this yeah. question which is the answer c sir which is the correct statement all right sir. so c oh you are a uh, when uh, your name please Radha. 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 Okay. okay. Anybody has a different opinion? 
the most of you are going for D, yeah. Huh? So D is like it's, it's mandatory. It's totally uh, they're telling it's not mandatory, but it's not mandatory. It's on the part of the institution. You are aware of solar waste manager rules as well. No, I am little bit aware, but not that much exactly. Aware. Okay, great. I read it somewhere. But you are very close. You are you are close. It's mandatory on the part of waste generator. Waste generator on this cannot be moved to the. So in what what is the problem with D? It has two things, right? It's mandatory is also there and cannot is also, cannot there. So, also there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So D is very unlikely to be true. Hmm? Yeah. So we are uh, then we can eliminate D. Then what is left with uh, the two rules and operative? No, no, no. And B has a uh, keyword only. Correct. B. The rules are applicable to notified urban local bodies, notified towns, and all industrial yes, township sir. only. Yeah? Only. Ha. Yeah. Right. We can remove remove B as well. Right? Correct. Exactly. Yes, sir. Then we are left with only A and C, and uh, which which one seems the most appropriate? Sir, it's A. It's like uh, we can guess a guess, sir, but it's totally wrong. But I can say it's five categories. It's too like number. They are telling five categories. It's just a guess, sir. I don't know about it. Correct. Exactly. Correct. There is there is there is so you're right, right. You have to think in that direction. That is yeah. But in in this case, you have to take a risk and uh, mm -hmm. the. A can be eliminated because there has a number in it, like five categories. It, it yeah. has less chance to be correct because this is one way you can can make that question wrong. Like it can be four or eight or six, but they have mentioned five, correct? Mm -hmm. So C has no such. Uh, I mean, uh, the, there is no such traps in C, so we can go for C, and C is definitely the answer as well. So yeah. without even knowing the solid management, we have arrived at the right answer, correct? So if yeah. you if you think in direction, don't you think that you can get ten ten questions extra correct? That's yeah, we can. Yeah, 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 we can. That's it. Then 70 can be 95 uh, or more, even much more than. Don't think that if your score is less 60 or 50, you are not be able. You, you you think in this direction, you'll see your uh, magic increase in your, your marks. Okay. Every UPC will keep like this question, sir. Yeah, of course. They cannot, they don't have any option. Okay. Uh, like uh, at least 50% of the questions will be statement based. In the statement based questions, they don't have any option other than somehow they have, they have to make certain questions wrong, right? They will somehow make it, but it may not be applicable on all questions. But since the elimination techniques, I mean, uh, the, the the way Clearize brands these elimination techniques is intelligent elimination techniques. And I have personally worked on many intelligent techniques. I have taken much time researching previous year UPSC question papers, and I have, I have categorized this. I have, I in, in in fact, I know something like around 40 techniques. Okay, I have not publicized everything, but uh, 20 techniques we are providing as a course for those who have joined prelims test series. So. Yeah. If, if these techniques becomes public, somehow if UPC knows, they will try to bring some aberrations into the questions. Okay, but they cannot always. Uh, I, I mean, they can. There is no way out. They have somehow they have to make questions wrong. How to make questions wrong? This is the only way they can make questions wrong. Right. But to, uh, but uh, there will be. There, I I strongly believe that the application of these techniques will remain for a long time because uh, as long as the question pattern is something like this. Uh, the application of the, the such techniques will remain. The extreme extreme statements, the negative statements, the numbers, different such things will remain. Okay. Uh, okay. And then uh, as now the answer is C. So you can now go to the next uh, next next slide. Yeah. Uh, this is connected with the em industrial employment. This is connected with an order. Okay. Previous question was connected with the rule. And this is connected with orders and rules. It's it's connected to rules also. Uh, but the, see that UPC are going to such extent rules. We are not used to it. That's what I am saying. Those who are preparing with an age old uh, kind of techniques or coaching, they are not used to this. This is new way of preparation, new areas UPC is asking. Nobody has told you this, like you should be preparing in this direction. Everybody is repeating the same thing, parliament, fundamental rights, DPSP, etc. Same book they are reading and uh, reading and again and again. But if you read the same materials and if you are expecting different results, you won't get it. Correct. If you are doing the same thing and if you are expecting a different result, what do you get it? If you need yeah. a re different result, you need to think differently. Think and yeah. act differently. So, right, sir. So, uh, yeah, th and try to solve this question, like uh, with, with the existing knowledge or with the application of logic and technique, try to solve this. With logic, only it's too difficult to solve with uh, uh, for knowledge. This is not an easy question. I agree. This is not an easy question. Sir, for this, I think uh, D will be the answer. Delhi, D for Delhi. Oh, 
uh, not exactly by boy okay but you can go wrong oh, in uh, i mean in, in my class you can definitely go wrong you should be going sir wrong. option a is the right answer yeah 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 option a a is the right answer right why for temporary people also this notice is necessary to terminate them actually why i think why upsc came with this uh, i mean uh, why the central government came with this particular rule industrial employment central amendments rule 2018 mm -hmm. is it to help employees or is it to help businessman businessman so the... to help businessman okay then what can be the answer they are also so i think both one and two are correct both one and two is the answer okay so uh, this is uh, this is part of the increasing the ease of business uh, in india okay, uh, okay so this is okay, this right. is much more in uh, i mean uh, to help businesses so uh, it's it's connected with the fixed time employment if fixed time employment uh, is implemented it it becomes easy for the companies to lay off workers and again the second statement is also correct and no notice of termination of employment shall be necessary in the case of temporary workmen if it is temporary there is no need of notice if it is permanent there there, there should be need of notice but if it is mm -hmm. temporary there is no need of notice that is to help businesses okay right hope you understood yes okay. sir great uh okay the next question again uh, this is not directly connected with the act but you will understand like how it is connected with the act you just go through the question and see Uh, and which area it is connected? See if you can answer this question with any of the knowledge in any of the subjects. I mean, uh, with the knowledge you have in history or geography or polity, economy, how can this be question be connected? the third option is anyway is correct i mean third statement is because option is also says the same but uh, second is contradictory to then third yeah to an extent uh, second and third statement are uh, contradictory yeah. uh, and if not three directly is, but to an extent yeah if uh, three is wrong definitely then uh, there yeah. will be only two options a and c so no. no, i think the second statement is wrong sir so. actually upsc will put to uh, a lot of uh, actually without even knowing anything you just look for contradictory statements in a question okay there will mm -hmm. be always contradictory statement and you can learn in the in the exam hall and then find the answer there will be always contradictory statements that may, may not be directly contradicting but if you apply some logic and think you can see that it's contradicting the same mm -hmm. you are true true why baby and uh, radha sir it's true that second and statement third statements are to an extent contradictory so only one can be right and which statement Uh, is most likely to be wrong second statement sir second statement is most likely to be wrong correct yes, so so second statement is wrong that itself takes out uh, b and d correct exactly then a and c is only left correct. so uh, and the a answer is a a a 1 and 3 only correct yes okay that's correct that's correct sometimes we have to take the risk okay otherwise we have to learn and why i put this question is because these things where where is it defined uh, actually this question uh, that's why i put this question purposefully because these are all connected with the acts only and this is not defined anywhere like did it does it come come under history no so many acts question was asked yeah uh, does this i mean uh, will this will you learn this particular topic i mean the details of this will will it come in geography No, no sir no not at all not at all will it come in econ economics will you study the details of this and and no uh, the, no, 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 no no yeah it it does not come in science and technology it does not come in current affairs it does not come anywhere right but it it is no. connected with the mines and minerals act so yes. that acts needs to be specifically covered okay then only it, it can with the, if you need to answer this with prior knowledge then that act needs to be covered then only you need mm -hmm. to you will get the correct details so this is also a question even though not specifically mentioned this is a question again connected with the act okay right sir so the next question 
and also th this is a trend in 2019 okay more than 11 questions were there but that mm -hmm. doesn't mean that in 2020 21 the year which you are appearing there will be many mm -hmm. questions in act even upsc mm -hmm. can reverse the trend and there can be zero questions when they act also but we right. on the safer side we should be uh, studying acts that's my point okay we are discussing the high priority areas so that you should be covering that that doesn't mean that the trend will be repeated every year the trend varies upsc is as i told upsc tries to get advantage of the coaching also so if we are projecting this as a high priority area they may try to avoid this area all together but that that is that will be temporary only but they cannot do it all time this, this is from the perspective of a civil servant this is something that they should be aware of so mm -hmm. i don't think the importance will go on fade away completely there will be again there will be questions maybe not be 11 or 12 but at least four or five will definitely be there So the second statement is wrong, sir. The first is definitely correct here. The second is wrong. The people participation is mandatory. Yeah, it's not mandatory, sir. How can they tell it's mandatory under this act? I I like, hear uh, only uh, two or three voices uh, in this class. I mean, uh, uh, Radha Krishnan is talking, Vaibhavi is talking, Habir is talking. Uh, uh, but others are more or less silent. Uh, uh, is it because you are uh, typing in the chat window, or uh, you are ashamed to uh, come forward, or, 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 or is there anything like that? I, please, please feel free to talk. Only then you will be learning. Okay, you can make mistakes. It's my class, right? You can make mistake in front of me. Don't uh, be afraid of me. I'm very friendly. Uh, you can, uh, you can make blunders. No problem. Nobody will mock you. Okay. Uh, okay, let's uh, come back to the question. And uh, as per the law, the compensatory afforestation fund management planning authority exists and under uh, exists both at state and uh, national levels. Okay, people's participation yes. is mandatory. And the whole okay, do you think people's participation is mandatory? Have you ever participated this? No, no. That is the main thing. Like uh, if, you, if such questions come, think like. Have you? I have anybody forced you to participate in any of these kind of programs? No, no. Uh, so, right? it's a law like forcing things. Too much. Huh? And this is more related to businesses. So uh, people's participation is quite unlikely to happen. Correct, correct, correct. So see, second statement can be uh, eliminated. Then eliminated. one is left only. One, one, one only. And, one and uh, one, one. Then one only will be there, right? Yeah, yeah, right, sir. Yeah, just eliminating one statement, one you are, you are, you are arriving at the correct answer. Right? That's the beauty of the this exam. Right? As I told, the all right question, right answers are directly there in the question paper itself. All you need to do is to find and mark it. That's it. Right, sir. So another question, and this is also not an easy question because we have. Uh, learned about it because regulatory bodies is a uh, topic with respect to. Uh, let me mute everyone and then uh, come back. Okay. Okay. If, if somebody needs to speak, you can unmute and speak. Okay. Let me uh, discuss this. Uh, uh, when we study UPC mains, uh, I see that uh, we learn a lot of lot about many regulatory bodies. Okay. There are many regulatory bodies in India, but. Uh, we we uh, we hear about sebi we uh, re read about rbi there are many such regulatory bodies but have you ever read about petroleum and natural gas regulatory board no sir no sir no, no. Sir. that's how upsc prepares questions okay we read about <laughs> most of the things but they will come up with something like this <laughs> petroleum and something else right yeah and it's telling and... the first regulatory body Uh, so, which is the uh, wrong statement? Our aim is to not to find the right answer. Our aim aim is to find find the wrong answer. See which first is the wrong, is which, wrong, which can be wrong. First, first statement. Wrong, first statement. Is it the first? If it is the first regulatory body, at least we should be hearing about that, right? That should be yes, having such prominence. We have not read in books, sir. We have not. Yeah, we have not read. Books. If it is the first first regulatory body, at least when we uh, uh, study about regulatory bodies, this should be the first we should be knowing, right? So yeah, one yeah. can be definitely eliminated, correct? Right. If, if, so we are left one with one. It, yeah, B only. That, yeah. Then that is only one option. So even without studying itself, we can answer this. This is also again connected with the act. I mean, there is an act connecting with petroleum natural gas regulatory board. Again, that is also connected with that. But even without knowing the act, you are now able to solve this, correct? Mm -hmm. yes, yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. Ah, uh, sir. Sir, I would It like is. to yeah. Sir, I would like to quote one more problem. Uh, yeah. Like many a time it happens, sir. This is as uh, you are telling that uh, we must have gone through 
uh, if in case it is a first regulatory body but uh, keeping in mind the vast scope of upsc studies and all many a time it comes into mind that might be the case and we have not gone through that that kind of confusion also create at the uh, exam pressure that's that's correct but but have confidence in yourself why we at <laughs> the thing that you anyway you have devoted at least one year of serious preparation into upsc yeah yeah yes yeah, sir so yes yeah, if, if if during that one year you serious preparation also if you have not come across such a body think that upsc is trying to pull you okay uh, okay. have confidence in yourself then have okay. confidence in your studies like uh, okay. if if you are a serious student you should be uh, hearing it somewhere in, even in the traditional textbooks also you should be hearing it ha exactly if, first if, regulatory if, huh. correct if 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 that is not there in any of the books there is most likely is a trick uh, to cap to be false most likely to no. be false okay? okay so that's what i advise all uh, what but you I told is right like what is yeah, told is right there is there Uh, what you told is has a valid point, but the case is that usually with with the preparation you have already done, uh, hmm. you will be you might have covered almost all the important point important topics. If, yes, sir. If in, in in that post duration something is not coming, and they hmm. are trying to make it uh, look like a strange thing to you, that's yeah. most likely uh, it can be a false statement. Hmm. Okay, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, then. Uh, uh, With eight thirty, right? Like so. Let's take uh, one or two. I think one or two questions, and then we'll wind up. It's time to wind up. And just one more thing to announce before we wind up. This, this is that. This is the first session we are having. Uh, uh, what is your feedback regarding this? Like, uh, I hope this this is the way we should conduct, or any suggestions for the next sessions? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Nice right. one. Sir. Correct. Sir. We are able to interact with the faculty and get to know a lot of. Okay. First this time we are able to interact. This is something like a new learning experience, right? Like we yes, should sir. continue. Continue like this. Yes, is, this is also helping you, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. sir by okay. telling something, you are able to retain the concept in the mind, sir. Okay. Good. I hope, hope, hope that's the case with others. I mean, uh, I'm hearing the voice from only a few. Like uh, others also say, feeling same or any suggestions, like any, uh, anything, like uh, any modifications need to be done with respect to the next classes. You can even use the chat session also. Like. Uh, yes, sir. Sir, I want to say one thing because uh, sure. while we are discussing some questions. and uh, while you are just answering some questions if we could get some of the other added points also regarding the question if for example we are already discussed about the what the patents act right correct correct and Very from that right. question we we just analyze uh, which are the which are not uh, coming under patents act so correct. if you could just address what are the things that can come under the patents act so that will be an added information so exactly, uh, that, exactly. That's why i, I initially I uh, planned it like that only uh, your name please Sanup sir. Sir, Sanup. Okay. I initially thought like we, I, uh, the same way you told, but the case is that we have the, uh, severe time constraints. Okay. Today also we wanted to wind it up uh, by from six to eight, but still even with discussing the questions itself, it is taking something like eight thirty. Okay. So that's why I thought like don't go into the details of the act. Uh, but your point is valid, but whenever relevant, like as in the case of the operational discussion or something. Or Indian Patents Act. If additional information is needed, definitely we take up. My in intention is to help you uh, practice more questions. Okay. If I go into the details of these questions, we we won't be we having this much time won't be enough. That is the main problem. But if a detailed class is there, like a prelims or mains program, one year program or something is there, definitely we'll go in that direction. But this is a being a crash course. Uh, of course, we have the time constraints. And the first session okay, being the first right. first session, I I think we I have uh, given uh, uh, from our end from the end of the clearance team we have uh, given selective participation, free participation to a few aspirants as well. But in the next sessions, maybe we will be going uh, mostly uh, confining the participation to our I mean the payment uh, paid participation. But sometimes we do it. Uh, I mean for the selected participants who. Uh, uh, express interest in our programs. We'll uh, give it for free also. Right? It will be mixed. Like uh, that is the case with most of the programs we, we are doing. It will be a mix of free and paid. But uh, for uh, I mean, uh, if, if any of you are not aware, we this is a prelims means Mars booster program, and there is a prelims means Mars booster plus program as well. And the plus program has the additional features of uh, Clearize prelims test series. Uh, all the four packages in Clearize prelims test series: paper one, paper two, and previous year UPC retake of last ten years, based on official UPC key and negative marking and time mark. That is also there. If if any of you are not aware, I'm just expressing this. Now let's go to this statement and uh, see how how can you solve this uh, maternity benefit amendment act. Um, 
can you find the answer this is also connected with the act okay this is another question connected with the act see how many questions sir i think the option uh, c will be correct the three only habib okay Hello? c c three only what is the problem with the first statement i, I don't know first statement is correct or wrong but i uh, eliminated a second statement that's wrong i think second is actually the, five times uh, they have allowed for five times six okay. uh, that number uh, the minimum six the first and the first and the second actually with the, in all the statement there are numbers actually uh, even the third statement also uh, women with two children there is also number there right right so uh, how will you eliminate this sir uh, statement number 1 they are saying 3 months pre delivery and 3 months post delivery but the thing is it is very much flexible kind of thing we can combine okay. i mean any mother can combinely uh, they, he, she can adjust as per her need so it is that's not correct. necessary 3 months and 3 months okay that's my valid point yeah another thing is it's five uh, visits daily uh, somewhere i have read i think four i uh, i think I, i think that's four but anyway yeah, that's connected yeah, with the number right that's for sure it's not six yeah, for sure it's not it's not it's not six so one and two has gone and only three is there actually only that only say if one and two and one there some something has to be remaining there right like so we uh, <laughs> keep it three yeah right sir okay. <laughs> yeah correct that right everything will be wrong and there is no such option huh? so, right. <laughs> uh, so 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 we are left with 3 and 3 is the answer that you are right 3 is the answer yeah and the last question for today okay with this we yeah. can wind up uh, right uh, uh, in india the extender producer responsibility was introduced as an important feature of which of the following c c e waste management rules 2011 e waste management rules to the exactly. okay. this yes is the answer and yeah. this is connected with which uh, which act uh, again again the environment protection act that's why yes, i told that if you are reading any one of the act yeah this is also connected with the environment protection act right most of the most of the rules here is connected with that hmm. plastic uh, biomedical everything is connected with environment protection okay so this is also connected with environment protection yeah. that's right hmm? the environment protection and a lot of rules but uh, we have come across e-waste have come across there are a lot of more things which we cannot e-waste solid waste management everything is connected with environment protection bio right, bio right, waste right. yeah so that 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 part we have covered in that book. if you have that book that is easy but even without that book also you can learn i am not forcing anyone to buy the book i have written you can even go mm-hmm. and search uh, net uh, go to the site of Uh, i mean the ministry side you can download the act and learn but that will take a lot of time but I, as mm-hmm. i told we are focusing on the smart work right you are sitting yeah. in this class because you know you you know the importance of smart work that's why you are sitting in this class so same way if there is an a, a easy way to learn the acts if if that is possible if you can get it get it and learn that will be faster so uh, yeah. that's uh, that's for today uh, i think uh, thank you all for the participation you were a very lively thank crowd you. and most of you participated i i need more more participation in the next class uh, and those who have remained silent please uh, uh, please open up uh, there is no harm uh, uh, speaking and making mistakes uh, that's how you will be learning that's that's the exam training which i would like to give you okay Uh, uh, yeah. thank you all thank you all for participating see you tomorrow uh, eat, eat thank you sir to, Six to eight. Thank okay. you, sir. Good night. It was really yeah. wonderful session. Sir. Yeah, it was good session, sir. Uh, thanks. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.